Okay. And we are live. <laughs> oh boy. Welcome uh, to, welcome to the stream guys. Uh, <laughs> guys, ladies and anyone else. We have a uh quite a doozy today, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Oh, what we are you do. talking about? We are talking about a bunch of films made by a guy whose entire filmography is nothing short but completely non-split opinions. Everyone agrees on where on what on what these films are like in terms of quality no yes no, Zack snyder no. is completely uncontroversial as we know not at all divisive no one like, has ever not at all about Zack snyder films <laughs> not even once <laughs> not even briefly there's never been Everyone any controversy on the quality of his films no that of course. he's one of the most unanimously agreed upon directors of all time that's why we're specifying how people view his films because he's so widely and we have upon. like and we have three people here who all are gonna totally agree on our thoughts about every single one of these fucking movies so. 100 oh yeah 100 uh why don't we introduce yourselves i know jazz you've been here before but ash this is your first time so uh we'll try to be gentle with you today and um <laughs> i'm so sorry i had to well i appreciate time. i appreciate your being gentle oh i'm very happy to be so hello easier. everyone <laughs> i am ash uh you may know, know me on twitter uh, by the handle ashy groovy uh my pronouns are she they and uh i am very happy to be here with my good friends anthony and jazzington ah uh, jazzington you... <laughs> yeah i was gonna say if you all weren't here for either of the lily orchard streams or the Razzie one i'm jazzy oliver i'm a voice actress uh you you may have heard me in such roles as... <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. That, pa that painting tool in the inanimate show. <laughs> now, what happened is Jazzy saw I was considering talking about uh, Zack Snyder. And what happened is she came and she stole my wife and held, is holding her hostage right now. Though very politely allowed me to cook dinner first. That was the one, one agreed upon uh, tenant of the hostage situation. So that she could talk to me about... He has nothing if not considerate. Exactly. Exactly. Look, look, as soon as I heard you were ranking Zack Snyder films, I had to... I really had to join in this one because this is... I'm just gonna, like, not gonna bury the hatchet. This is someone who I have very mixed opinions on his overall filmography. Mm. I will say that I like some of these films. I will say that I don't like some of these films. And some of these I have... I just haven't fucking seen, so... Exactly. I, I'm, I'm the same way. As for me, I am uh, a bit more forgiving of Snyder as a filmmaker, you might say. Uh, I don't hate any of his movies that I've seen, surprisingly enough. My opinions of his movies range from decent to, oh my god, this is freaking amazing. And I realize I am in the minority in that opinion. Mm. But uh, we're going to have some fun talking about Look, all these movies. Exactly. I will say, when Snyder makes a film I like, it generally satisfies a very specific niche for me. So in that regard, I do like him as a filmmaker. I think his films are interesting, even if they don't even if they end, even if I see a film of his and I don't like it, I don't necessarily regret watching it. Like that's mm. kind of where I stand. I like he, he's made shit I like, and when he's made shit I like, I tend to really like it. So, and uh, I have uh, just finished my hour-long video talking about my opinions on Zack Snyder. So I'll allow, so I'll allow that to speak for me in some senses. But again, my general consensus is. I think that he is a filmmaker who is either hit or miss for me personally. When he misses, he really misses. When he hits, it does the job. Uh, but which films do I think are good of his? Which ones do I dislike? Well, that's what today's video is going to be all about. Or this stream, rather. And uh, I think what's interesting today is that we'll be able to discuss uh, our different opinions of the films, our different perspectives on the films, as well as, very importantly, um, where we differ in regards to these films because none of us are going to have the same opinion on this i think we're all going to have different perspectives Look, i can already think of one film where i am going to be an outlier and say oh my god this is one of the best things ever made so <laughs> if it's batman v superman I'm gonna have to throw and something at you. <laughs> that one i actually agree with her on right right i no, it's not bad i'm gonna say no it's not batman v superman i'll, okay. I'll let ash i'll let ash sing her praises on god that damn. one. <laughs> oh my goodness okay i was gonna make that joke but 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> made oh, it for me. Now, for, for the record, we're, only, we're primarily going to discuss the films uh, Zack Snyder directed, though I think it is worth bringing up films where he had creative involvement in otherwise as well, just for supplementary kind of discussion. Uh, of course, yeah. I have a whole list of Snyder's filmography right here. But more importantly, to the YouTube algorithm, I have a tier list, which uh, Jazzy and Ash can see when I bring it over uh, right now. I have found this tier so list. Are we going to do the tier list based solely on your opinions, or is it going to be like, are we going to rank it based on the average of what each of us thinks? <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to have to f argue each of the points, and I <laughs> will bend to peer pressure because I am very... Uh, I, 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 well, I mean, what what I was thinking is that, like, I mean, it's it's your channel, so ultimately it's your choice. <laughs> this is true. I mean, it's, it fill the screen. I want the dumb advertisement. Right. I was uh, going to say yes. you can you can rank it however you want. I'm just curious if like our words are going to have any influence yeah. on the ranking. Or it if will. It's, it's more. It's, I think okay. it's more interesting that way. It's more okay, fun okay. if we like disagree and we have to come to a consensus rather than just me forcing my opinion on everyone else. I think it's more entertaining I... to get a roundtable discussion than one loud person's <laughs> perspective over I, two other loud I will people's say, perspectives. <laughs> I will say already, I appreciate that we're only talking about one version of Justice League here for official ranking. Yeah, well, we, let's we let's are. unofficially rank uh, the jo Joss Whedon Justice League real quick. Uh, F tier, right? F tier. It's F -tier? fucking horrible. Yeah, we, we all agree it is F tier. So, so yeah. I want to tell a funny story regarding Justice League real quick before we get started on the Snyder films proper. <laughs> go for it, go for it. I saw that on my birthday, the year it came out. Oh, you poor soul. <laughs> ah, I was in oh, Vancouver at the time. I really wanted to see it because I saw it because Wonder Woman was kind of showing me a bit of a positive sign for the DCEU. Um, and at the time, I didn't entirely hate Batman v Superman, if I'm being honest. My opinions have clearly changed over the years. But mm. at the time, I was a bit more excited for um, for Justice League. like, mm -hmm. And I was interested to see how it would go. Um and I distinctly remember, we went to a theater at the mall, and we went all out. Like, my friends got me all this food and shit. Like, this was, like, the best fucking birthday celebration at a movie theater you could ask for. Ignoring the actual Pulling movie. Pulling out the red watching. carpet for Jazzy Oliver. Right, oh. right. And we even, um, because the MLP movie was around out at the same time, we got little, uh, MLP drink toppers. It was so adorable, and I love it. Is, that is actually kind of wonderful, actually. I'm not gonna lie. And here's That's the funny, cute. here's the best part. Those MLP drink toppers, best part of the whole experience. <laughs> because I had to sit for two hours watching Justice League. Oh my goodness. You got some adorable toppers out of it. And I mean, <sighs> I mean, in fairness, my friend ended up getting me um, at, at a store nearby because the movie was so bad to kind of make it up for me. Uh, they got me a copy of Your Name, so that made up for it. <laughs> that's actually a, a way, I, that, that's much better than that. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'll accept that. That's okay. That's a good compensation. You have good friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, yeah. So what order are we doing this in? Like from, we, we from his do... first film to his latest? Mm -hmm. or... Yeah, we're going to do it chronologically. So starting in 20, not 2020, 2004 and ending with uh, just this past December. Uh, as of this ranking, of course, uh, obviously Rebel Moon Part 2 is not out yet, though I... I'm reasonably certain it'll probably rank alongside wherever Rebel Moon Part 1 is. I feel like they're of the same caliber based just purely on, on gut in, gut instincts, but we'll see when we get there. Right. Maybe Rebel Moon will be completely unexpected and be totally different from what I expected to be. Who knows? Um, we have in the ranking 10 films, uh, but we will discuss a few extra, and I'll bring them up as we come, as we come to those, uh, those films. And, of course, we will respond to comments along the way. A couple right now I'm going to look at. His super, his superhero stuff, if bottom tier, even though I've not seen most of it. Uh, yeah, so it, it his superhero film is very controversial, obviously, because of the superhero film landscape. And he was competing with Marvel for most of his tenure with the Justice League, with DC. Uh, I don't hate BVS, but the negatives really piss me off. That, that's a fair common consensus. Uh... I remember giving BVS an 8.5 when I first saw it in theaters as a form of denial because I still hadn't gotten over the atrocity that was Man of Steel. Obviously, my thoughts have changed almost immediately. We shall see if we agree <laughs> with one oh, of those. You are entitled to your wrong opinion. You're entitled to your right opinion. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We'll find out. This will be, <laughs> well, this will be a lot of discussion, uh, I think. 
I'll, I'll, I'll be fair. I'm even if I don't, even if there's movies on this list I I don't like, I'm gonna be fair to all of them. I will point out good points and bad points about all of these. Mm. Well, at least the ones I've seen, because I'm just gonna say it right now. I have not seen Zack Snyder's first film, so I am going to be completely out of this discussion. Oh, the Dawn of the Dead. Well, oh, yeah, I've never seen Dawn of the Dead, unfortunately. The first film we are doing, which wow. is Dawn of the Dead, his directorial debut. Interestingly enough, uh, written by a uh, current DC uh, Helmer. Uh, oh my God, I'm blank on James Gunn's name. James, James Gunn. Gunn. <laughs> I'm trying to blank on James Gunn's name, guys. James Gunn's name, James Gunn. <laughs> who is James Gunn's name? Crud. <laughs> James Gunn, okay, who at this so point had done a before, lot of other films. Before too, we so. get into the meat of this, mm -hmm. I just want to say that I find it really weird that people are trying to stir up a rivalry between these two. And I'm just like, they've worked together before. Yeah, multiple friends, times. By all they accounts, like they're friends. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're, right. And they're very similar in a lot of ways, too. Like, even it, though I think, personally, I think James Gunn is the more multifaceted, talented writer-director. Uh, I think James Gunn is able to adjust his style a lot more than Zack Snyder is. And if you've read, or if you've seen like stuff like his trauma movies, you can really see the in you can still see the same consistent voice from point A to point B with with uh, with James Gunn. But I love James Gunn's films. I think those are some of my. I, yeah, he's, I, I do think too. He's a great director. I, I love James yeah, I Gunn do too. Mm. James Gunn's great. Yeah, um, although, I, although yeah, I, I do think Coolville sucks. <laughs> I do I do find it funny that people try to establish like these rivalries with between Zack Snyder and other filmmakers when by all accounts I don't know many filmmakers I can't think of any if I'm being honest that op that have any animosity towards Zack Snyder by all accounts he's a chill dude so I don't know anyone in Hollywood who seems to have anything against Zack Snyder uh, I I looked for this video like I I really tried digging for a single negative story about Zack Snyder for the video I did like last week i couldn't find a single thing like i found everyone from uh jesse eisenberg even liked him and, and like jesse eisenberg seemed very anti-social in general like uh, everyone seems to mar <laughs> um a bunch of marvel actors seem to respect him like everyone loves the guy like i i couldn't find a single bad word about the guy uh except mm -hmm. people who haven't met him criticizing his themes and what have you but it's a whole other discussion Right, there, but there's a fine line between not liking his films and not liking the dude. Like, exactly. <laughs> but unfortunately, on the internet, you will find people conflate not liking a film with uh, wanting to uh, hate the filmmaker as well as a person, which I don't Right, right. And there's no room for nuance on the internet. Mm -mm. But yeah, uh, so what do you no. guys think of this movie made by two people who the internet say hate each other? I really like okay, it. I like so it. <laughs> the Dawn of the Dead remake... Um, I don't think it's as good as the original Dawn of the Dead, mm -hmm. obviously, but I mean, like, no. like <laughs> that's not fair because the original is Dawn of the Dead. It's a freaking legend, so yeah, it would have to be like a god tier movie to even come close to the original. <laughs> no, yeah. but I do think Dawn of the Dead is a fun little zombie movie on its own. Mm. Like the, <clears throat> oh, what was I saying? Like, the, the characters are likable. Uh, I find the action sequences to be thrilling and superb. Uh, and it even has a good boy, a little doggy. Mm -hmm. oh. I, when I think of Dawn of the Dead, I think of two, I think of three uh, scenes. I think they each give me a different vibe. The first thing th scene I think of is the opening of Dawn of the Dead, which is just one of the best cold opens in a zombie film, like up there with 20 Days Later, I'd say. Just a great little moment of pure horror like being at ground zero of this zombie apocalypse and it's so disorienting but also massive in scale and i love that it's such a cool opening uh but and and scary like in its own way the other thing I oh think, yes i also think of the 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 zombie birthing scene which is i feel such oh, a james yeah, that's gun the thing that most people talk about when they talk about this movie oh and yeah it is disturbing <laughs> That's, that's messed up. And it's such a James Gunn thing to do, too. I feel like that's more a James Gunn than Zack Snyder thing, because he always pulls these, like, grotesque uh, images. But still, Zack Snyder realizes that image so effectively. And and, and you know, once you see that the one pregnant character, you know it's not going to go well for her. Like, you know there's no way it's going to end well, but, like, you don't realize how badly it's going to go until that happens. That whole sequence is frightening. But I also think of the... 
the scene where they're on the the truck and they're going through the horde of zombies and I, I honestly feel like Dawn of the Dead is at its weakest when it feels like a video game and it's at its strongest when it feels like this very sincere very human zombie story um I suppose the original Dawn of the Dead which I think was just fl- perfect from start to finish um well not perfect there's some pacing issues but like very 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 excellent I'd say Pacing issues, not unlike the zombies. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and oh, and these are fast zombies, which is always fun. A little faster, which is I, I which was really yeah, exactly. In the so I, um, um no, and also no. I will say mm-hmm. that I, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, you, interrupt. The, go I for will it. say it has one of my favorite needle drops in any movie ever, and that is, of course, Richard Cheese's cover of "Down with the Sickness." <laughs> that is great, though I don't think it's my favorite. 2000s zombie movie needle drop that goes to Shaun of the Dead with the uh, Queen. <laughs> Don't oh, stop oh yes, yeah, like none now can compete with that. Zombie movies I've seen. None can compete with that. Yeah, but they both they came, came out, out at the same, same time, <laughs> which is crazy. Oh yeah. Honestly, this feels like what Resident Evil should have been. Sorry. <clears throat> Damn, I have no doubt Zach that Zach was do... a fan, too. <sighs> Sorry about that. Maybe, maybe Zach should do Resident Evil movies. I'd actually be curious to see how that would go. That'd be it great. might not be. Whether or not it'd be good is like just dependent on if it's a good Snyder Day or a bad Snyder Day. But I'd be curious to watch it. Like... I'd watch it in a heartbeat. That sounds fun. So wait, um, Ash, what are you thinking? Are you thinking this is... I don't think it's S. I think it's a solid A, though. What do you think? I think that... It is a solid A. I agree. Mm. I do fully, wholeheartedly agree that it is an A-tier Snyder movie. All right, so we're in agreement there. Perfect. The first one, there's no Good argument. Start. This is great. Good start. <laughs> and, great start yeah. to this. And obviously, I will say that Jazzy, you need to see it. It's a lot of fun. Mm. I'll, pro- I'll probably watch it. So I wanted to watch, so I was only able, I wanted to catch up on a couple films that I hadn't seen before from Snyder's to, to get ready for this stream after mm-hmm. um, Ant invited me yesterday. Or I guess I took, we're going with the story that I took his wife hostage, because why not? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's how it is. <laughs> um, I mean, she's not here now. <laughs> how do we and know I mean, he didn't take her and hostage? I, unfortunately, I only had time to watch one of his movies that I hadn't seen before, which we'll get to when we get to it. Mm. It's valid. And I had... We visited a few Snyder films from my video last week, so they're still somewhat fresh in my memory in some cases. Uh, though Excalibur is way fresher in my memory than anything else. Um, All right, so, so next yes, is Dawn of the Dead, fun zombie movie. Hmm. It's great. Yeah, fantastic movie. Uh, next right, is 300, moving which, on. Jazz, you have seen, right? We got 300. I've seen We've 300, seen but 300. it was a... But it was a while ago, um, and I, I'm i going based on vague memories here. Okay. So um, just keep that in mind when I'm talking about it. There could be things you're talking about in regards to my... It is possible that I'll watch it again at some point, and my opinion will have changed. But mm-hmm. as far as 300 goes, um, it is iconic. I'll give it that. Like, mm. there are lines that are... This movie is very quotable. I will give it that Incredibly much. so. Now, question: Have it is also you... oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, go. Also, I appreciate that we're get that this film got very male gazy on all the dudes. Like, mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> he um, Snyder loves oh, yeah. the the human body. Like, people make jokes about, oh, he just does women that way. No, he likes everyone that way. <laughs> he really he does. He wants like, to make everyone look like a Roman statue, <laughs> genuinely, or Greek great. statue in this case. <laughs> Um, but I remember thinking 300 as an overall movie was pretty decent, a bit dull at times, if I'm being real. I remember there were a few bits where I was kind of bored, but, oh, I, I dug the style. I thought the performances were good, though. It was hard to listen to Gerard Butler in this movie without thinking of his god. For some reason, I cannot hear him scream in any movie without thinking of his god awful singing in Phantom. Like, oh god, it's just, yeah. It's just, as, uh, a, as a Phantom of the Opera fault, fan, though. I feel like I'm cursed with that now. Like, <laughs> imagine him belting. Yeah, that's not out. really the movie's fault, though. No, it's no, not. no, no. This is not that. That is a me problem that does not factor into my thoughts on the movie. Um, okay, but so. I do, as for me, when it comes to 300, uh, I, I I think it's decent. I don't think its story is that great. Mm. But I mean, like, I, I don't really, I'm not really a fan of the, the story in general, like, like the original 
story by Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. But even though this movie is definitely style over substance, one cannot deny that the style is fucking stunning. Oh, it is. Like, incredible style. There's a reason why lines like, This is Sparta and Tonight We Dine in Hell still are still in the backs of several people's minds and are like our famous quotes that that ascend that are practically some of my earliest memories of a film quote becoming a meme <laughs> like oh yeah, yeah. it's it's like, insane how much this movie has ingrained itself in pop culture like even to right. this day and and I got to give it credit for that um again I agree with Ash in that a lot of the problems with this movie can are come down less to Snyder's filmmaking and overall um, technical competence, um, and more just with the fact that I am not that big a fan of Frank Miller's writing. I can count on one hand mm. all of the <clears throat> stuff he's written that I liked, and that is just one thing. I like The Dark Knight Returns, but that's about it. Like, Here's a question. You, so you okay. both have read the graphic novel, right? I have. Um, oh, okay. uh, yeah, I, I have, but it was years ago, so I don't really remember all the details, but I, I remember not being a huge fan of it. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I'm not a big fan of the graphic novel. I think this is when Frank Miller was really becoming a self-parody of himself. I think the graphic novel is... It's only 40, 50 pages. It's not very long. Uh, honestly, I think the Zack Snyder film improves upon the graphic novel, which might be controversial, but... Oh, yes, absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case, just generally, because... At the very least, you have something pretty to look at throughout the entire I mean, the whole film. subplot with Lena Headey, that's added to the film. It's not in the graphic novel. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the, <laughs> that entire plot was Zack Snyder. Like, he he made that. Like, that, that whole really compelling, really good subplot is completely Snyder. That is, that is a creation of the movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Damn, uh... I can't believe I'm going to say this, but uh, Snyder based. Yeah, no, yeah. And this is why I, I, I get okay. like push back a little bit on the Snyder as a misogynist criticism because I feel like stuff like, like that shows. I don't think he's a misogynist at all. Like no. there, there's this video essay that you both need to check out. It's called "The Women of Zack Snyder's Filmography," and it is a great watch. Mm, I have to look. I'll have to uh, watch that and then put add a link to this video or the my other Zack Snyder film video for that. Mm -hmm. Um. I think the um, my biggest issue with 300. I, I, I have two big issues, and I'll say I say what I, I'll, what I like first. I think the action is really really cool. Uh, I think it works really well if you watch it as like a piece of propaganda in universe. Like it's a story <laughs> being told to the soldiers of Sparta. So, like all the elements people always criticize, like the over machismo, like the fact that Gerald Butler has like Gerald Butler has like abs when. I mean, like the, the abs like that when, you know, um, the fact that the uh, the Persians look so monstrous and inhuman when they were just people, it all makes sense from the perspective that it is a piece of propaganda meant to boost the morale of soldiers. Like that contextualizes. I mean, I don't think it's in, I, don't know, I don't know how intentional that is, but I, I like that interpretation of 300. Uh, my big issue is the action, bizarrely enough. Really? Yeah, and I'll explain why. Uh, because the whole there's a whole scene in 300 where uh, I forget the character's name. He is the, the 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 hunchback character who ends up selling them out to the Persians. Uh, Quasimodo. Yeah, basically Quasimodo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he shows up, and he's the reason why he can't join the army is because the Spartans have to fight as one unit. They have to form a, a wall of a wall of shields, and then they can use their spears and swords to kind of poke at the adversaries as they come at them. Which was the the strategy for Spartans at that time? A very strategic, very uh, calculated approach, using the numbers and you know, kind of turning their own defenses into an offense. The problem is, whenever the enemies come in three hundred, they break formation and just do these like wide swinging slashes at everyone that, that comes at them, and they leave their whole bodies exposed. So like, yes, it's cool to look at, but it's also completely contradicts the strategy that actually won that would not won the battle of Thermopylae because obviously they ultimately lost but like that resulted in them withstanding the forces of the Persian army for so long so that yeah. that con yeah. that element bothers me and that, that's more because I like the strategy of like large scale warfare in historical epics or fantasy films that's so, fair and, and, and but like each individual action scene those are cool they're a cool fight 
but it's when you look at it as the context of why they endured. But then again, I also think a bunch of guys standing behind their shields poking at the adversaries as they come at them. That's not necessarily as interesting to watch as, say, uh, you know, the, the dancing, twirling, slashing attacks, which I think is one factor. The other factor, I think, that bugs me is that I don't really ever get to a sense of the individual soldiers of the Spartans all that well. Like I, I get a that sense, also- I guess it's their faces. I know Michael Fassbender by looking at Michael Fassbender, but like, I don't really get what he's about beyond being a Spartan in the army. Like I don't get a sense of his, his, his story individually. I get a sense of the big characters stories, but I don't get the picture of the, the, they aren't those smaller character beats where you get the characters into seeing a goofy thing back and forth or having a moment with each other that you see in a lot of other large scale epics. Like, but those are minor criticisms, really. Um, those aren't really like game breakers. It's just like, hey, the memes are great. The jokes are great. The action sequences are stunning to look at, even if they make no strategic sense from a warfare standpoint. And the style has influenced everyone. There's a reason why every Zack Snyder film used slow-mo after this. And people forget this. Like He, he, he knew he had something 100%. cooking when he was making that. And so he just decided to apply that to every other film going forward. 100%. And I think it's also interesting that this and Sin City used the green screen so effectively. Cause oh, yes. Yeah, Robert Rodriguez directed the shit out of Sin City. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd say Sin City did a little better because they also incorporated the color schemes and all. Oh, that. Yeah, I think but, it's my favorite adaptation of a Frank Miller story. Yeah, my favorite direct adaptation. I agree. Uh, I will say that. Uh, I will say that Batman Begins is a really good loose adaptation of Batman Year One. Uh, but it's up there for me. I think. Um, as is the animated series uh, interpretation of the Batman, uh, the Dark Knight yes. Returns uh, future in the, the Batman animated series, when it's like the they're all telling the different stories about the possible futures, uh, possible versions. Oh yeah, of yeah, no, I re- one, I you know. really dug the uh, Dark Knight Returns one that they did. That, that one was, was great, so cool. Uh, but, no, but as far yeah. as three hundred goes, yeah, yeah. Um, if I were to rank it anywhere personally, I'd say based on vague memories again as a disclaimer i haven't seen this film in a while but based on what i remember and what's kind of been dredged up from this conversation mm. i'm gonna say it's an okay film nothing great so i'd say c you think c uh ash what do you think yes yeah, yeah i i actually fully agree <laughs> really C-tier. i was gonna say b <laughs> we, we, i am surprised with how much like we we agree on two count them two movies so far yeah, I was gonna say B tier, honestly, but I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll veer towards the party here in this one. Let's put it in C. I'm Go surprised. I thought you, that would be a little higher, honestly, given everything. But I guess we're putting it in C no, tier. Uh, I mean, like I I like Snyder's films more than the average person, but surprisingly enough, I'm not that big on 300. That and that's interesting. I, I I mean, I like 300 as an action film. I would have put a B personally, but. Hey, I'm okay putting anything where I'm okay doing making controversial statements here. I'm I'm fine with that. Just wait till we get to Man of Steel. That's when it gets really controversial. Oh boy, I'm the DCU ones are going to be a trip. Oh mm. yeah. So we actually, but, it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's we do at, have oh. we Sorry? do have a DC film next, if I'm not mistaken. It is. <laughs> Before we get to Watchmen, we're gonna look at a couple comments here. Uh, 300. I'm conflicted because it is one of the best action movies I've ever seen. On the other hand. God, Frank Miller sucks, and his movie shines as a spotlight on how horrible of a writer he is. Agreed. And this is during Frank Miller's really uh, rough era as well. <clears throat> I'll be honest, oh, the most I remember about 300 was the opening logos and the memes. Yeah. And the the memes is in the best parts of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a there's a reason why this is Sparta is an iconic scene not only just because of the memes it spawned it's a good fucking scene like <laughs> it's a great sequence and it's I like that Leonidas look, looked at her before he made the decision to kick him off her entire... like I, I actually like that mm. and like he he looked to her for guidance and she's like she nods her head and then he makes the decision guide to me do wife that. yeah <laughs> and again that's not in the graphic novel. <laughs> That's all Zack Snyder, uh, which again shows Snyder was able to elevate the script of 300 in a lot of ways. 
Um, yeah, I'll be honest, uh, Zach and Deborah Snyder are kind of couple goals. <laughs> oh, yeah. And again, everyone seems to like them. So, like, they're doing something right. Uh, for all my criticisms of Zack Snyder as a director, I don't believe he's a sexist, a bigot, or some far-right goon. Agreed. Yeah. I yeah, think... Yeah, I don't believe he is either. I think he... I, I say this in my video more in detail, but I think he's just a big kid who's able to play with the biggest toy set in the world. And, and that's why I kind of like seeing his movies, because exactly. I want to see what crazy shit he does. <laughs> exactly. Like, he feels like he's just a big kid just playing with, like, <laughs> you know, $100 million toys. Which I think leads to a lot of interpretation of where he may unintentionally have meaning that's not, that shouldn't be there, but I don't think he's doing it intentionally it, either. It's just an unfortunate, it's an unfortunate happenstance, honestly. Hmm. Frank Miller is a really interesting writer slash artist to me because he made some incredible comics and then almost immediately after Batman Year One starts his journey into making garbage. Agreed. Um, I think Frank Miller's... Quite an interesting timeline, indeed. Oh, yeah. It's it's <laughs> fascinating. I think Frank Miller, Miller's uh, best work is not Batman. Everyone always says, oh, it's Batman Year One. Oh, it's The Dark Knight Returns. No. It's his work on Daredevil. That is his best work, like, by a mile. Yeah. Uh, his work on Daredevil is fantastic. And it gets overshadowed by Batman because the dark age of Batman was so you know, such a big inf inf impacting point in culture, but... Yeah, it doesn't help that, like, the Dark yeah, and Knight Returns... Batman is more like... iconic in general, so of course that's going right. to get a bigger spot. And it doesn't help that the exactly. Dark Knight Returns was kind of this hugely influential work that kind of affected the trajectory on where a lot of Batman media was going, so... Agreed. But here's the thing you got to keep in mind. With people always say, um... Bat uh, Daredevil's arch enemy is the Kingpin. That is the big enemy that... When you think of Daredevil, you think, oh, you think of the Kingpin. You think of Wilson Fisk. Wilson yeah. Fisk was a Spider-Man villain until Frank Miller showed up. Hmm. Daredevil and and Kingpin never meaningfully encountered each other until the Frank Miller run. Everything you associate with Daredevil... I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Even, even everything about Frank Miller... Everything about Daredevil you associate with, with Daredevil started in the Frank Miller run. Electra, um, his really intense Catholic faith, uh, the Kingpin, all of that, the hard, gritty tone, it all could be traced back to Frank Miller's run on Daredevil. Like, there are I mean, I knew, I knew about shades. the hard, gritty tone, but oh, yeah. everything else, like, everything. you're telling me this for the first time. Well, I mean, there's shades of it before, but it was kind of like, you know, not really, it was kind of like a wishy washy thing. Like, he was a Catholic, but that wasn't really, like, a big deal. When Frank Miller comes up, that's when it becomes, like, he doubles down on everything. And, like, all this became such a major element. In fact, there's moments of the 2003 Daredevil Devil film that, like, is in some cases, panel to panel, shot to shot, some of the Frank Miller comics. Though, obviously, uh, different costumes, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Shall we talk about the next film Let's in our journey of Spider? About oh, Watchmen. yes. The Watchmen. 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 I'm just say, so, right oh, off go the ahead, bat, Ash. I fucking adore Watchmen. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, it is, no joke, one of my favorite DC movies. Dang. Um, I really like it, honestly. Like, um, so, so, fun story for the stream, even though you can't see me on camera, I brought along with me into the recording booth my personal collection of Snyder films, because I'm not a Snyder sna stan, but I like collecting films of filmmakers who fascinate me. Mm -hmm. And as established earlier, Snyder endlessly fascinates me. So, <laughs> so oh, yes. one of the films I own is Watchmen, which is a Canadian copy, and it even has the French title on it, and it's Le, Le Guardians. <laughs> Le Guardians. <laughs> um but no i so i acknowledge that watchmen as a movie does t make a few missteps as an adaptation but i personally and your mileage may vary on this i think the stuff that works as an adaptation vastly outweighs the stuff that doesn't work personally i can understand if someone may agree may disagree with me on that front but i think Yes, there were a few things that Zach did obviously misunderstood, and it kind of didn't translate well to film. But I think there was enough there that made it really work, especially if you're watching the director's cut. And, spoiler, this won't be the last time I say that about a Snyder film. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I 
I like it. I think Snyder's direction is solid, and I think David Hayter's script is outstanding. Um, I think the cast is all on point, honestly. I don't think there's a single performance in this movie so I felt was when it comes to when it comes to the ultimate cut of the movie, which is the, mm-hmm. the movie I prefer, mm-hmm. and if you haven't watched the ultimate cut, please do. It's amazing. One of the biggest changes to the film was uh, Black Freighter. Mm. And they and his story is shown in a series of animated sequences where he's voiced by Gerard Butler. I've never seen that cut. Holy you have seen, you have seen yeah. it? Yeah. It's and good. It is amazing. Huh. I might need to check that out. Okay, so here's yes, my hot do. take. Uh, <laughs> here's my hot take about Watchmen. It's okay. okay. But I don't love it. Uh, and I have uh, some real reasons for not loving it. Um, and I think they I think they I think Watchmen is a great showcase of Snyder's strengths as a director and his weaknesses at the exact same time. Uh, on paper, the script is very and I don't really I don't care about the giant squid. Like I, that doesn't matter to me as much. I mean, I get why the giant squid's better in the comic. I also get why they changed the Doc Manhattan. That I don't mind. I have no issue with David Hayter's script either. I think that script's as good a script as you can make with Watchmen. Uh, with some scenes here and there that I, I, I have issue with. But um, I mentioned in the video very specifically how I didn't care for the Warshack uh, death scene, for example. I, I, that that didn't... Because it should be this quieter moment of, you know, kind of futility. What I really get de- what really gets down to me is that Watchmen, the graphic novel, is a is a com- is a graphic novel about these fairly pathetic, fairly weak, wi- like not people who are kind of ineffectual in the in the vast scheme of the world, or are making the world a worse place to be in. Whereas Zack Snyder films them as superheroes, and even though they are, that's fair. I will say yeah. that to be fair, mm-hmm. I have never read the graphic novel. I want to. Oh, and yeah, I yeah. also want to check out the. The HBO miniseries, but the is fantastic. speaking as someone who has only seen the 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 Zack Snyder movie, mm-hmm. like hearing what you're saying about how the characters are portrayed in the graphic novel mm-hmm. does make me want to check it out even more. Mm-hmm. But speaking as someone who has only seen the movie, like my opinion is only about the movie and not the graphic novel. Hundred percent, and that's and that's and that's and that's why we have discussion because you need to share that different perspectives. You know, everyone has a different viewpoint of the same matter. I read the graphic novel before watching the movie, so on paper, this if you look at the story on paper, beat by beat, there are of course changes here and there. Some things make sense why they were changed. Like for example, uh, when Rorschach talks about the first time he killed someone in. When he, when he finds the criminal who, um, you know, uh, uh, murdered the little girl, in yeah, yeah, in the graphic novel, it's it's pulled. It's a scene taken straight from Mad Max. Uh, he sets a death trap for the criminal, sh- shackles him by the ankle to like a bar or, or something, and hands him a hacksaw to ca- carve off his leg to to break free of the uh, the the trap, which again was used late, much later with Saw. Um, because Saw was so popular. They changed that, so he just directly attacks the guy. And I get why that change is made. That's a change that makes sense. I'm not talking about those kinds of changes. What I'm talking about are the changes where you look at the uh, a sequence, for example, where, for example, any of the scenes where Rorschach, when Rorschach is first introduced, it's in this very noir way where he's this mysterious figure, but the more you learn about Rorschach, the more pathetic you realize he is like he's a homeless smelly gross person like his therapist talking to him starts to like lose his sense of he's becomes like really paranoid just talking to the guy because rorschach's paranoia is infectious with the film because of the way Zack snyder films rorschach because of uh, Jackie Earl Haley's great performances, Rorschach. You get to... oh, Jackie Earl Haley oh. commanded that entire film with oh, his yeah. performances as Rorschach. He was so freaking good in that movie. He's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, all the acting acting is fantastic. Um, 
Jackie oh, yeah. Oily, Patrick uh, Patrick Wilson, um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, <laughs> Billy Crudup, Billy Crudup, yeah, all great, all fantastic. Um, I just feel like it bothers me a little bit how Snyder portrays them as heroes, whereas in the graphic novel they're portrayed kind of as losers, like not losers like. Guardians of the Galaxy where they're lovable losers like genuinely these people are you you kind of feel bad for them you you don't look up to them you don't want to really you you don't even really want to see them succeed because some of their motivations are very self-serving very uh, delusional like I mean especially with Dr. Manhattan I feel like Dr. Manhattan is presented as this brilliant incredible figure even though he is of course out of touch with reality there's this real tragic the way you know with with billy crudup's voice it, it, it's you you instantly you instantly feel bad for him he sounds like he's on the verge of crying in so many scenes where even if you know he's like detached from everything um but in the graphic novel it, he almost is a little in, he's almost creepy like he's almost really unsettling like it, he almost has like a Ray Ayanami thing going on where it's like y you're watching this going like you're not sure if you feel sympathy for this character or if you feel kind of like disturbed and that's the vibe I got you get this is this quiet to watch in the graphic novel even though it's like a, a, a it's, it's a it's a paper medium it's a graphic novel there's no there's no sound there's nothing of that but there's such a stillness from panel to panel to panel where the characters barely move. It's only like one detail shift from panel to panel, and you get this sense of staggered slowness from bit to bit, where you're just waiting for something to happen. And it's whereas with the Zack Snyder film, everything's in motion. It's always something is happening. It's bombastic and big, and it's an epic. Whereas in the graphic novel, it's this quiet, still unpleasant story and it's more chinatown than it is um the avengers and i feel like snyder's adaptation while very compelling as a film i can't help but think of those quiet still i'm not sure how you would do that i mean i guess the miniseries comes closest but it, it, okay know. so I, i'm I, guessing yeah. the miniseries is more faithful to the grapple than than the movie is kind of well it's a sequel so and, and it means well, it's a sequel. Just, oh, okay. It's a follow up. It's not an adaptation. It's a follow up to the graphic novel. Um, okay. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, and it does a lot of different things with it. It focuses more on modern on the history of race relations in America. It focuses on vigilante justice and vigilante crime. It focuses on what happens when gods surrender their godhood and when men become gods in a way that's really compelling um and how it completely removes your sense of humanity also it has scar as ozymandias which is just fantastic oh hell yeah yes um, he's amazing so i'm gonna say so, and i do like, slightly disagree with the idea that this movie um over glorifies the characters I think there is a little bit of it, and it it does kind of bring down the message somewhat, but I don't think it was done... I don't think it goes all the way with glorifying yes. them, if I'm being real. I, think so, there, I still think yeah, I there agree. are plenty of moments where it shows the fact that these are not heroic characters in any sense. They are very flawed, disturbed people. Um, and I even get that with Rorschach, which is the character who many argue kind of got the... probably got the worst of this treatment along with Ozymandias. I still think Rorschach is pretty disgusting in this movie, if I'm being real. Like, oh, yes. Jack mm. Earl Haley looks like shit throughout this entire thing. That's true, and it's hard to really... It's kind of impossible to really capture just how gross Rorschach is in the graphic novel. Like, I in get, a film. yeah. Because he has I think a it just smell. Comes down, <laughs> right, I think it just comes down to the limitations of doing this as a live-action work, if I'm being real. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's hard. I mean, but like I said, there are mm -hmm. animated sequences in the Ultimate Cut that mm -hmm. adapt, adapt the Black Freighter story, and you need to see them. I mm. should I should check out the ultimate cut at some point because I've seen the most I've seen is the director's cut, which is still a great cut of the movie, if I'm being real. So, mm -hmm. so um, I'll say this. So, 
having heard like all, um, all of what Ant had to say with regards to comparing the movie with the graphic novel, I, I take those points. I, I really want to read the graphic novel for myself, like mm -hmm. just to see what Ant is talking about. But as someone who has seen the movie on my own, all I can say is I really, really enjoyed what I saw. And that's fair. I think it works really well as a movie. I think as a film, it's a good film. I think all my issues come in with it as a graphic novel. Um, and I think in its completed form, the film is fantastic as a film. That's my. That's why I'm so conflicted over it, you know? Because, and one thing I will point out too that, I, that, that bugged me. I think, actually, you know what, who I think the best performance that's closest to the comic book is? Who? It's, uh, it's, and what it's, it's Patrick Wilson. I don't doubt that Patrick Wilson's always. Yeah. I oh yeah. Seen Patrick yeah. Wilson. I don't think I've ever seen a bad Patrick Wilson performance. If I'm being real, like even in even in Phantom, he was one of the best fucking parts. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I I honestly think his best performance, personally, in my opinion, is in Hard Candy. Hmm. Hard Candy's excellent. It, it's a really underwatched film, but like, it, 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 he's he plays. Uh, the, if you've seen Hard Candy, you know what character he what kind of character he plays, and he plays against. Um, he plays against ah. Oh, oh my god, I'm I'm drawing a blank on his name. Trans actor. Why am, um, why am I drawing a blank on his name? You have to be a little more specific. Um, I was gonna say, do you have any Umbrella idea Academy. how Umbrella little Academy. hair hose? Hard candy. Who? Uh, Umbrella Academy. Elliot Page. Elliot Page. Elliot Page. I was drawing a blank on his <laughs> name for a second. I'm like, okay. wow, this is. This is you can tell I've had a long day before coming to the stream. <laughs> no, so Elliot yeah. Page he play, and this is pre transition, but like the dynamic between these two characters is some of the most compelling psychological horror I've ever seen in like a movie of this nature. It's fantastic. Mm. If but, anything, um, in regards, to yeah. Oh, go ahead. So if nothing else, watch Hard Candy. It's fantastic. Anyway, sorry. Go but uh, in regards to Watchmen, um, in terms of where I'd rank it, um, I'd give it a very high B, if I'm being real. Think so. high B? What do you think? I mean, yeah. me, pers me personally, I'd give, I'd put it in S tier, but I know it's not going there. Uh, you know what I'm going to say? Uh, I was going to say a high B too, but considering that you want it in S tier, let's put it in A and compromise. That works. Yay. Yeah, somewhere in the I middle. I deal with that. Yeah. All I, right. I do think it's a great film. Now. I just think it's a rough adaptation. Let me look at a couple Fair. comments before uh, we move on real quick. I'm just going to scroll through here. I'm excited for this next one. <laughs> Watchmen is a movie I'm oh, very conflicted yeah. towards as well. The movie is a great ad adaptation on paper, but the fact that Snyder even adapted it shows that he did not understand the point of it. I, I think you can adapt Watchmen. You just need a director who is... You would need someone like a David Fincher, I feel. But David Fincher would yeah. never do a faithful adaptation of Watchmen. That's the problem. No, I don't think he will act. <laughs> no, like a David Fincher style for a director who wants to have adherence to Alan Moore's script. Uh, I think with a work like Watchmen, the meaning is far more important than the events. And Snyder, unfortunately, missed a lot of the meaning of the book. I do agree with that. Um, okay, so what I'm seeing from most of these comments is that Watchmen is a really good movie, but a bad adaptation. Yeah, I think that's a fair way of putting it. As a film, it really that's... works, but... And the problem okay. is Alan Moore's right. messaging is so very nuanced and very subtle that if you don't directly get the right tone, you lose the meaning. Because it's because Alan Moore is, is a he's one of those writers who doesn't spell it really out for you. Right. There's one moment that I think of a lot with Watchmen, and I'll say this before we move on. Uh, in the in the movie, they have the same line in the movie in the graphic novel, but the context is totally different. So, the line "nothing ever ends." Mm -hmm. In the movie, it's I think it's between Silk Spectre and Night Owl, if I recall correctly, that that line is said. Like, and it said like you know you know uh, you know um, John said you know we always say nothing ever ends you know, but in the in the graphic novel. Dr. Manhattan says it, and it's not a romantic scene. It's between him and Ozymandias. And Ozymandias is kind of going, you know, in the end, you know, I did the right thing, right? And Dr. Manhattan's like, oh, well, nothing ever ends. And then he leaves. And leaving Ozymandias going, wait, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you know, that kind of nebulous sort of lack of satisfaction. Like, you're left without the feeling of catharsis where you're like, oh, no, well, you know what? 
it was awful what happened, but in the end, everything worked out, right? You left with that sense of, oh, not only is there no answer, but they, even the characters don't know what what they did was right at the end of the day. And there's a real sense of unambiguous lack of catharsis that, the, that Snyder doesn't really think want to do. I think he likes catharsis too much to ever end on that note of true, cold, uncomfortable lack of... Uh, catharsis it's anyway uh i'm sorry i went went off track there okay so yeah like i said bottom line seems to be great movie bad adaptation yeah that seems fair all right and from what i could tell that seems to be a common consensus on his next movie (laughs) legend of the guardians the owls of gahul legends of the guardians the owls of gahul so i just watched this film last night oh in preparation for this stream because i wanted to i wanted to try and watch one or two of his films that i hadn't seen so that it so that i could still provide a substantial amount of commentary on this stream so Mm -hmm. legend of the guardians i never read the book so i am so unlike Watchmen, i'm actually going in more as how ash was going into Watchmen, where i'm looking at this purely as an individual film on its own merits and i gotta be honest I fucking loved this movie. I didn't know I did what too. to expect. Owls of Gohul was great. I, I also didn't know never, what to expect. I never wa- read the book either for this one. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I saw yeah, it when so, it came out and it was... Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I didn't know what to expect going in. I, I only knew that this was Snyder's first and so far only foray into animation. Mm. Um, And it is... <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I think this film's underrated as fuck, honestly. It is it was such a visually fascinating, very engage narratively engaging movie. I the I'll say this much right now. The animation has not aged a day. This film came out in 2010. I was watching it yesterday and it felt like a film that came out yesterday. <laughs> mm. Um mm. yeah, I saw this in an IMAX theater. Oh, that sounds amazing. And it oh my God. was gorgeous. Yeah, this movie's breathtaking. Um, right. I I think the themes are very strong. I loved the world building. My only real complaint is I think it could have benefited by being a bit longer, if I'm being honest. Like, it felt like it was trying to do – it felt like a Lord of the Rings movie with only mm. half the runtime, if that makes sense. That's fair. At least the Snyder Cut. <laughs> so it's still no i'm not doing i'm not do, i'm not doing a snyder cut shit for the owl movie as much as i'd really like to but... i also have to kind of echo what you're all saying I, echo you know i really dig uh the legend of the guardians i i think this movie's really fun and for me it harkened i never read the graphic no, no, graphic i never never read the, the the books it's based on um but i always this for whatever reason this feels like a, a more mature version of when I was growing up, there were a lot of these animated films about animals, right? Like with owls and trees and woodland critters. This feels like the grown-up version of that. This feels like the red wall of owl movies. <laughs> and mm. I dig it. I don't think it's the most brilliant world building. I don't think it's the most complex no, universe. But, it was still- but it's really good. <laughs> Yeah, I was still engaged throughout the whole thing. Like, I was very fascinated by, like, the inner politics of this owl society and, like, what everyone's deal was. Um, And I also really liked how dark it was. I love kids' films that have this dark edge to it and just have these select moments that are very clearly there to give children nightmares, and I love it. So, 100%. Like, it gives me, like, a real uh, Secrets of Nim vibe throughout. Like, just just epic, as told through the, the lens of Zack Snyder. Yeah, no, this is one... I think this is the only one I didn't really mention much in my Zack Snyder video because I couldn't really figure out a way to bring it up because it is hard to yeah, bring into discussion. It, it does tend to get overlooked when it comes to Snyder's filmography. Yeah, and, but it's so good. And it, ten- it tends to be his overlooked films that I tend to like the most because this is honestly my second favorite Snyder film. We'll get to my first favorite in a bit, but... Mm. <laughs> this um, might be my favorite Snyder film. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I really, really dig this one. Oh. Okay. Like I yeah, like no, this one I, the most. Uh because like I've... I really liked it when I watched it yesterday and it's only gotten better as it's kind of stewed in my mind if I'm being real. Like it's a film that I kind of appreciate. It is I am sad that he hasn't done any animated films since then cuz I don't, I'm going to be real. He needs to do more animated films I, if I they're think like this. His directing yeah. style suits animation perfectly. Like Agreed. He, he imagine Zack Snyder doing like an anime co-production. Like that's I I feel oh, like a well, like, 
doing like an we'll Afro samurai a kind of thing. <laughs> I feel like you do. Have, I feel like you do a great like Afro samurai go production kind of thing. Like that level yeah. of intensity. Team up. Team up. Team that up will go so a, hard. Team him up with a guy who did Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust uh, in Ninja Scroll, and you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, this was yeah this. Yeah, no, I was genuinely impressed by this. I do acknowledge that from what I read, there were a lot of substantial changes from the books, and I can understand that. But I think just as a movie in general, this was so engaging. This was so narratively strong, and, like, a lot of the visuals really stuck with me. And I like when anim animated films especially do that. I like when there's still images that play vividly in my head, even after just the first watch, you know? Like, Agreed. Agreed. 100% agree. And, and, you know, like, Jazzy this, and I... There's, there's this scene where the main character is kind of weather is kind of flying through this storm and it looks fucking gorgeous. Like, oh my god, yeah. Just the flying sequences and the feathers mm -hmm. and just it's fantastic. Uh, one it's comment so majestic. One comment here is saying it adapted the first 3 books of the uh of the owls of this of this series with the first book being in the first 15 minutes. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm seeing I, I'm seeing again some disappointment from Owl, the, these Owl book the Guardians uh, book fans, but you know I get that. But I have again I have no connotation I have no connection with this. I feel like All at right. this point. And here's the thing: if I read the books and I enjoyed them, I don't think it would make me like the movie less. If I'm being real, because I think it worked at like what they were doing worked enough narratively to really make a strong well-made film and again i i think zach needs to do more fucking animated films because i think his style sits yeah. well but you were about to say something ash yes uh i was about to say that jazzy and i last night uh when she was giving me a play-by-play -play of what she was watching we were discussing the fact that um <laughs> these these photorealistic owls showed more emotion than those in the fucking lion king remake <laughs> yeah because they're animated <laughs> <laughs> right, right. They because they weren't so obsessed. Like, yes, they look realistic. They, yes, they look like actual owls. And yes, the animation is impressive as on a photorealistic standpoint. But the animators, and by extent Snyder as the director, understood these characters need to still fucking emote. And there was no point during this movie where I couldn't tell what a character was thinking purely from the visuals. So. Hundred percent. It's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous how the more time passes, the worse the Lion King movie becomes, especially from. Again, this came out what ten years before the Lion King, eighteen years mm. for the Lion King. Oh yes, oh not eight, and, I was uh, like uh, eight nine years, years eight nine years. years to be more precise. Yeah, nine eighteen years. Eighteen years. This... Wow, eighteen years. What is this? Two thousand four. Mm -hmm. Wow, no, brilliant. This was... I was genuinely impressed by this movie, and considering I watched it the day after my rewatch of Batman v Superman, which we'll get to later, oh, God, I was doubly impressed. So maybe I had, so maybe I was going in with just that negativity and lo looking for anything decent. But I'll be got to be honest. Again, a lot of the narr a lot of its the narrative strengths, a lot of the the fascinating ideas, and a lot of the visuals really stuck with me. This is a high A from me. This is a very high A, mm. a bordering oh, on S. Um, you know. I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, a. A tier, easily. I disagree with both of you. I think it's S. <laughs> <laughs> you know All what? Right, I'll move uh, it, I'll I'll move it to S. I'll, since it's bordering, I'll move it to S to make this yeah. easier. You make this S. <laughs> S. The S Owl tier movie is the best one. <laughs> S for Snyder. Like I said at the beginning, I mean, it's ultimately it's ultimately your channel, so it's your choice. But I am perfectly fine with Owls of Kahul being in S tier because it is an excellent movie. Agreed. Now, here's one thing I think is interesting too. That I want want to illustrate before we move on because I think it is a really important point. Uh, of the four films we've discussed so far, uh, Day of Dawn of the Dead, Three Hundred, Watchmen, and uh, Legends of the Guardians, um. All four of these are adaptations of previously existing works. And... Yeah. Oh, so... Uh, yes. This is where the fun yes. begins. Also, going to be some comments. Uh, Cl oh, Chloe, no! <laughs> what are you talking about, Chloe? This, nothing happened here? <laughs> Hi, Chloe. We didn't replace uh, you. Don't worry, you're great. <laughs> we'll uh, yeah, so... Oh, yeah, our next film is a Snyder written film, and I'm gonna be real with you for a second. This oh. is my favorite. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we're gonna get some controversy we're about here. Punch, baby. 
So uh, apparently he's doing a Snyder Cut version of Sucker Punch next. That's what he was saying. Apparently he really wants to because I guess there was more left on the cutting room floor. But I'm going to be honest. I like the director's cut of this film a lot, and it's fine as is. I think oh, he yeah. should just leave it The director's cut of Sucker Punch is cinema. Now, so, and I think and I think if any more would just overstuff it to the brim. That being said, holy fucking shit, I love Sucker Punch so goddamn much. It is such a good fucking movie. Critics don't know what they're talking about. I essentially turn into the Snyder fans I make fun of when it comes to this movie. <laughs> it's all right. Sucker Punch like <laughs> it's okay. Most of Snyder's film. <laughs> yeah, Sucker Punch is like most of Snyder's films in that it is a visual beast. It has so much great imagery in it, like as as most Snyder films do. So, uh, funny story Sucker when I first Punch watched it. is deeper than your average Snyder movie. So, I'm going to be honest. When I first watched this film, and you can still see my live tweet on it from back when I first saw it, I kind of watched it as a joke at first. Like, mm. like I was like, oh, like, uh, I'm going to watch the one. Like, I'm gonna, I, yeah. yeah. I'm going to watch the one Jazzy Snyder film. Talking about it. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, and Ash was there too. I was like, I'm gonna watch the one Snyder film that should have no problem appealing to me based on its concept alone. Sucker Punch. What steampunk movie with 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 uh, with anime with anime ladies with big weapons going out like fighting, whatever the fuck. This should appeal to me on a base level. If this if, if Snyder can't impress me here, there's no hope for any of his films. Fuck it, impress me. And I, and I kept insisting. I kept insisting to her that I, I promise you, Jazzy, you are not going to be disappointed. You are going to adore this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, and lo yeah, no, behold, I love. She did. Yeah, no, I love Sucker Punch. I think it is a great film. Um, that is just Zack Snyder going full over the top nonsense, and I think he needs, uh, along with animation, he needs to do that more as well. <laughs> just embrace the craziness of some of his movies, but also it had some interesting themes that I kind of dug about escapism, uh, how it relates to trauma and how one can find strength in said escapism, as well as not letting their trauma define them. There's just so much of that, this movie that I absolutely yeah. clicked so, with. Can honestly. I just go off on a tangent here? One thing that really pisses me off, like I hate this mindset that, that if a movie shows a bad thing, it is in full endorsement of said thing. I fucking no. hate that mindset. And people apply it to this movie so damn much. And it pisses me off because, like, yeah, the ladies are scantily clad. And you're acting like that wasn't the point? Right. There was points to be made here. It's interesting how this film starts off as both like, nonsense. Like, I mean, like, yeah, the, the male gaze is obviously applied here. But there was a point to it wasn't right, just they're... male gaze for the sake of male gaze. Anyway, uh, Ant, we haven't let you talk, so why don't you say your thing and I can tell you how wrong you are. I think it's okay. <laughs> I don't have a strong <laughs> opinion on it. Ant. I, I think it's a very... Ant, what did you just say? I have a very strong opinion on Sucker Punch. I think it's visually a great, great spectacle. I think the action scenes are great. I get the themes. I just don't particularly think the themes are that strongly related in the film. I think a lot of the film's success with audiences is comes from audiences bringing their own feelings to the film. Because I feel like the film itself doesn't have a strong central idea. I think it is unified by these bigger big i think this film illustrates a problem i have with snyder's films in general where he has these big ideas that are very grand and very large and they are spread throughout the whole film but they're lacking that one thing that really cements it i think in the narrative like it really pulls it home i think sucker punch for me and i'm emphasizing this for me because i know a lot of people love this film and i'm not trying to crap all over your fun time but no, I, uh, no, 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 no. I, the, 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 no, not at all. Oh, no, no. But I, 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 I in general, look, look, look but, I'm going to continue gushing after you're done with this. I just want to get your point in, so it doesn't feel like I'm overshadowing whatever decent point you have that I'm going to call fucking wrong after. I'm joking. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, you have my wife, so <laughs> you have my wife hostage. So no, no, no. <laughs> so no. So we've only got sucker punch right now, actually. No, but like, and, and, and to your point, Ash, I do agree. You know, we. I hate when a, when people say that if a film. Or story has a negative thing in it it's endorsing it like especially as a horror fan i think you and i can both agree that 
just because something Hey, I'm has... also a horror fan. Don't leave me out of that conversation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I am also a horror fan. What are you doing? But I'm saying all three of us collectively love horror. Right. Um, you know, I'm yeah, saying like with say a movie like I spit on your grave, for example. That deals with some of some of the most traumatic things a human being can experience. Film's not endorsing it, unlike a lot of critics, what they said at the time. Uh, specifically Roger Ebert. But um Yeah, Ebert Yeah, he, he he was wrong on that one. He just he just hated that movie for some reason. But like so I don't think it's a case where I'm saying, oh, Sucker Punch endorses abuse or endorses any of that. That's not the case. Uh, I just don't think it's particularly it's 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 viewpoint is particularly strong. That's my that's my objection. Um, See, I feel like that's a that's a more valid criticism because you actually have like like right. a valid opinion and valid reasons for having it. In, but in when it comes, like understand that I am not talking about you when I'm <laughs> talking about the people who who bash this movie for being sexist, which it is not. Yeah, and again, I don't agree with any criticism that Zack Snyder is sexist. I, I said it a, a dozen times already. I think he's just a big kid playing with a big toy box. And I think Sucker Punch is the ultimate expression of that. Like, this really right. is... He is pulling out every cool toy he can think of, and he's putting it in this movie, whether it makes sense or not, to put that toy also, in Also, fun, fun fact, the, the team that did the effects work on this movie were the same animation company behind uh, Legend of the Guardians, and they're also behind a lot of the effects work on Moulin Rouge, which makes sense, because Sucker Punch is basically sapphic action film Moulin Rouge. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I'll accept that. <laughs> I'll accept that. It, this feels like the, the jukebox musical equivalent of an action film. <laughs> and well, that's why I fucking it adore it. <laughs> with this freaking amazing cover of Sweet Dreams Are Made of These. And oh, yeah, it that sets one the great. tone perfectly. I will say to anyone listening who has never seen... Anyone watching, this is a video. <laughs> uh, anyone watching who has not seen Sucker Punch and are interested in seeing that, I heavily recommend the R-rated extended cut, I think. A lot of the cuts made for the PG-13 cut kind of weaken the story, so. And I do think Especially... the ending is is dark. I think it's a sufficiently mm. dark ending. I will say that, too. Yeah, like, they, they, they butchered the hell out of the ending in the theatrical cut. It's definitely worth they, going they out really of your way. They really did. It's worth going out of your way to get the extended cut, if I'm being real. Like, which, again, seems to be a common theme in Snyder films. I wonder if this is foreshadowing to something. Unfortunately, Snyder became very over reliant on his director's cuts. I feel like Watchmen yeah. works without the director's cut, but it's better with the ultimate cut. Mm -hmm. Sucker like, Punch is like the first Watchmen... where it's you can't watch the, the theatrical cut without you know the theatrical cut mm -hmm. is actually not worth watching. It, it is the first mm -hmm. case of that I feel with Sucker Punch. Right, and so. this is going like, to become no, a it's pattern. not even it's not even a question. Exactly. Right. So, so yeah, it is. It is a film that I will admit a lot of what I got out of it is very much subjective, honestly. I even admit in my thread that I, it is entirely possible that none of what I interpreted from the film was may have even been intended. But I think based on how Snyder talks about this film in interviews, part of it was, and I do think there was there was a lot of meaningful writing involved in this film that I think mm -hmm. just flew over a lot of people's heads and again I understand I am turning into the Snyder fan that I actively make fun of on Twitter all the goddamn time when it comes to Sucker yeah. Punch but <laughs> I am I, I am so... mainly just glad that people are coming around to this movie like in in more recent years mm -hmm. and like I'm glad that more people are appreciating it that's all that's it's, all I want it's definitely say. a cult film I'm just not part of that cult <laughs> is the thing it's okay. It's okay. I'll enjoy my I'll enjoy my robot samurai flavored Kool Aid in peace. Valid. I'll accept uh, that. I, okay. I, I'm gonna say so, I'm gonna say S tier for me. I love this movie. I will also say F tier. I'm saying C tier. So let's meet in the middle and put it in uh, B. B. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in. A. Uh, Okay. okay. I was going to say, I, I, I'm more accepting of A, if I'm being real. That's fair. Since it's two S's versus one C, I guess I can lean it towards the A. I'll give you that. <laughs> so, uh, um, so far, it's amazing that there's one movie in C tier, three in A tier, and one in S tier. And, like, Zack Snyder is supposed to be this like really divisive filmmaker i'm also surprised that the one that i expected to be the highest is actually in c tier if i'm being totally honest with you <laughs> well going I do in i'm thinking some, i do love 
animated owls. But um, let's shake things up a bit, because the next one, if I'm not mistaken, is Man of Steel. The next one is Man of Steel. Yeah. And uh, this is where sparks are going to fly. Man of Steel I'm just going to come out and say it right now. Okay. I... I am indifferent towards Man of Steel. It has plenty I like. I, it has, it I has like plenty Man I, of Steel. It has plenty I don't like. Overall, whenever I watch this movie, I always come out with the same sense of meh. Like, it's not, it's not spectacularly bad, nor is it as amazing to me as something like uh, Guardians or Sucker Punch. It is a movie that I think is kind of lost in its identity because it is... It wants to be kind of like the Superman answer to Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, but then it didn't get the chance to be because it quickly just was retconned into the start of a whole big cinematic universe. And as a result, I think out of all of Snyder's films, Man of Steel is the one that lacks an identity to me, if I'm being honest. It's there. It exists. I I disagree because I feel like Man of Steel uh, um, stands perfectly well on its own. But regardless of the quality of the movie, I feel like it stands on its own rather well. I think like, Man of Steel has one of the single greatest moments in superhero cinema and has one of the single worst moments in superhero okay, TV. Okay, so why don't we start off with the be- what you think is one of the best? It's when Superman first starts flying. That, oh, that scene great. is fantastic. Oh, yes. That scene's Classic. beautiful. I love moment. that moment. Love that scene. The music, the I sequence, I think it's one of the best scenes in any cape film ever look like but it's also I shortly watch... followed by the scene where they have the tornado coming in and oh, you know that shit he, and he's you like no you son don't grab you know the dog i your human father who can't fly or resist the weather will run you know into what? the storm will... to gra- rescue the dog oh wait son who can travel so fast the eye can't detect his movements wait wait i'll stand here as the tornado slowly swallows me whole while well, I have a typical okay. Kevin Costner I, reaction to everything, I am not. I am not going to defend that scene. <laughs> to this day, my my I spouse like, and I still laugh about that scene. In fact, Jazz, yeah, you can ask my hilarious. spouse that you came after. At but... the same time, at the same time, like I get what they were going for with that scene, but at the same time, it's hilarious. But like it, what, it is. But what irritates me is that the death of Pa Kent was done so fantastically in the in the the richard donner superman movie where it was it was he dies of a heart attack and it's the idea that you know for all the power superman has there's some things he just can't influence that there's some things that he can't do anything about and it's so real and grounded and it's a great scene where he has a there's that father-son speech and it's like you know it's like a normalish conversation and I think it mirrors the the speech that Pa Kent and um, Clark have after the the bus rescue of Man of Steel. But I think the with it, it, it's parallel. But I think the movie the seventies film does a much better job of it. And then he just dies, and he just drops, and like it's this quiet, understated sequence, and the lack of bombast in that really is impactful. Whereas in Man of Steel, it feels like they can't go five minutes without something blowing up. Uh, Pa can't can't just die of natural causes. He has to be sucked into a tornado. And because you're dealing with bombast, and because Superman's so powerful, it it kind of makes you question, why doesn't Superman do something? (laughs) Even though I know what he said he was going for, the restraint and trying to say the world's not ready for Clark. And I know that... Uh, having read a bunch of interviews with Snyder over the last week, couple weeks and seeing all these interviews, what he really wanted to focus was on how the world would react to Clark, to an alien like Superman. But like, I think he was so in, uh, invested. I really in respect that. that he tried to Agreed. look at it from that viewpoint. I, I agree. There's a lot that. in this film I like. I'll I'll admit it. Like this is a film that that I don't necessarily have any qualms with rewatching because it does have scenes and moments that I do enjoy. I just think for the most part it's just kind of meh. I'm not particularly big on this portrayal of Superman and spoilers. No. That's going to that's going to stay consistent across the DCEU films as a whole. I think Henry um, Cavill's a fantastic actor and I really like yeah. him as Superman in some scenes. 
but I feel like he needed a better bizarrely and here's something that people may may, may clown at me for I think we saw shades of his potential as Superman in the just justice League. you're not wrong I will like agree you, I will agree uh, I think you see the, the lighter one. shades of his character there you never see I, in these I, yeah ones. but at the same time those lighter shades came right the fuck out of nowhere and was not in line with how he was it portrayed was, well, the problem is the film the last sucked movie. that's the big oh, yeah. issue just weird <laughs> The problem is yeah, that I that say, movie sucked, but you can see the shades that he was that he could have done bet more, one hundred percent in these other films. But again, because these films are so dour, like he's such a, a, a sad person in all these movies. When you can see the the shimmer of like joy, joy and potential there, and even in the Black Adam end credit scene, you see some of those shades of like potential, like wholesomeness that Superman is defined by. And I get also, also if I may go off on like a, a tiny oh. mini tangent here, huh? Anthony and I, uh, um, when my my adventures with Superman was airing, yes. and like we would watch it week to week, we would gush about it to each other 100%. all the time because 100%. like the dynamic between Clark, Lois, and Jimmy was just so precious. I loved it. Oh, I like that is that. how I... that is how Clark and Lois should be portrayed. 100%. That's another thing I don't like anyway, about Man I just wanted of Steel. To make that point. No, That's I another agree. thing I don't I like about too. Man of Steel is that is that I think the Clark and Lois relationship is kind of shit. So yeah, no, and plus, uh, again, in my adventures with Superman, if I would say is... shit more like not like started off properly. <laughs> like I, I, yeah, I wouldn't shit. say shit. I think the problem yeah, is I wouldn't say it. with Man of Steel you can in general. Say it. I wouldn't say it. I think my problem with Man of Steel in general is is just not a lot of humor. You know. And I don't mean like you have to make jokes like it's a like it's a buddy cop movie, but like I, I some mean, levity, something like a little. I, mean, like, more... I understand that because Superman in in general has like a lighter tone. Mm. But this is why I think at the this same is why... time. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Go go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No no no. You can go. You can go. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go into no, like a whole thing. At, yeah, I'll at the same too, time, also. I don't. <laughs> yeah, um, as I was saying, like. At the same time, I don't mind the darker tone because it's something different with Superman. Like, you can mm. disagree with the tone and all, but, like, I respect that he tried to go in a different direction than most adaptations would. I get that, and I appreciate that, too. Uh, and, again, this is also coming off of, like, the last Superman movie in live action was Superman Returns. So you needed a Superman yeah. that was a different tone, tone, and you needed something that wasn't so, like reverent to the old version of superman i, I respect that and you Dude, needed superman to punch someone hard in the face <laughs> but i'll give it this the action was great like i think all the action scenes were a lot of fun oh yeah 100 oh, yeah. as, action it, as it is with every side of it. like like i think snyder just wanted to do dragon ball z shit with superman and i kind of respect him for it and it so. works and i love how um, he doesn't but... hold back the speed of these super beings as well right and the thing is so the thing I noticed about Man of Steel and why I think out of all Snyder fil Snyder's films, this one lacks a clear identity is because um, Christopher Nolan was also very much very hands on with this movie, if I'm not mistaken. And it feels like a, an attempt at what the Dark Ni the Dark Knight trilogy had going for it, like this more grounded, darker, like, for lack of a better word, realistic to go at the character, not understanding it's fucking Superman. <laughs> I've heard rumors uh, that I can't substantiate about the behind the scenes with Man of Steel and why it's so dark, even by the standards of the Justice League trilogy that Snyder did. Um, oh. I've heard rumors, mind you, I cannot substantiate anything I'm about to say, uh, from people who have had connections in the film industry, that Nolan really had his stamp either directly or indirectly on how this film got made. And you can just it see that. Sense. And you can see that because even with the previous Snyder films, there's humor, there's levity. Not that there's jokes every five seconds, but there's moments where people can lighten up a little bit. Even uh, in the next film, even in the sequel to this film, there's still some moments of levity. Yeah. Like, not a lot. And I'll, and I'll get into my issues with that film when we get to it. But Alfred. Just Alfred. <laughs> just yeah, Alfred and like... Perry White in the next film offer... All the levity this film could have used, honestly. Like, we're not talking jokes. We're just talking moments of, like, just charming little human interaction. But mm -hmm. as far as I understand it, uh, either because Nolan was kind of putting his stamp on it or because the producers really wanted to 
follow in Nolan's footsteps. They really stamped out a lot of the humor, which is bizarre because the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises and Batman Begins all have good hu- jokes too. <laughs> yeah, so like, it, they have moments of levity. So it feels weird. It feel it feels mm. like Snyder was either by his own willingness or because the studio told him to wanted to make a Nolan film, and as a result, I think compare. No matter what I'll say about other films that I think are worse than this, um, which we'll get into in a set in not too long, honestly, mm-hmm. and film, and regardless of what I have, I've had to say so far. Out of all the Snyder films, this feels the least like his work, and whether or not that works for you is just going to depend on if you like Snyder's style or not, honestly. <laughs> like, yeah. Also, um, his question we haven't really talked about with this movie: What do you think of Michael Shannon as Zod? As Zod. I, I think he's hilarious. He's great. Love Michael Shannon as Zod. <laughs> he is hamming it up the entire time, and I love every scene with him because he's clearly having the time of his life playing this character and being very goofy and over the top. And he is the main reason why I do, despite my misgivings, do slightly enjoy revisiting this film from time to time. Like, I honestly you think, think your son is safe. <laughs> I will find. Him. I will find him. I will find him. <laughs> Uh, I will find him, Lara. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will a, find him. I this might be a controversial opinion here, but we, now that DCEU is over and completed with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, I think the Lost Empire, whatever. I think the Zod Lost was the Kingdom. no, no, you were right. Oh, was Lost right. Kingdom? Okay, cool, cool. I think I'm getting mixed up with the New Empire and the Frozen Empire. No, you got this. it mixed. You got it mixed up with Atlantis, the Lost Empire. That also. Which valid, valid We're issue. mixing up movie. I think Zod was the best of the DC EU villains. I don't think I think the closest we got to someone topping Zod is Ocean Master and Black Manta in the Aquaman films. Again, I like them, Patrick but I'm going to say like, he, I'm going to say as far as DC EU villains go, this is Black Mask Erasure, and I will not stand for it. <laughs> oh, I forget about Black. Oh, I forgot about Black Mask. Mask yeah, Erasure. okay, that's valid. He's up there too. I love Black Mask. <laughs> I was going mean, to say, Ewan McGregor's Ewan McGregor. Black Mask was so goddamn good. That whole <laughs> movie was very underrated, I feel like. It is. I, I love Birds of Prey. It's but a um, fun yeah. one. As, but yeah, I do like Zod in this movie, and I like how over the top he is. I was very underwhelmed by his return in The Flash, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, well, Nothing in The Flash was anything but whelming. It was a very whelm movie. It wasn't Fair. overwhelming. It wasn't underwhelming. No, it was just I whelmed. liked it when I first watched it, despite the the... CGI deep fake actor thing, but yeah, thinking back on it, like I think I like it less. I don't it, hate it, I just like it less. Yeah, F- The Flash is a great example of a movie where you're like, oh, well, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And then you think and about the more it, you and you're like, about actually, it. <laughs> it was actually worse than I thought it was. That's what happened to me because when I got out of the theater, I said, you know, that was honestly kind of good. I I didn't mind it. And then as I thought about it, I was like, oh my God, there's so many fucking issues with this film. Like, but anyway, that's a conversation for the other day. As for Man of Steel, um, where I'd personally rank it in this thing, I'm going to go with mm, C. Like I said, there's stuff I like. I I will go with C tier as well. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. C as well. Uh, I, I think it's. I think it's a decent Superman movie for its time. It was needed because again, we had not had a Superman film where someone got punched since Superman four, but like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> which, is, which I will say is objectively yeah. much worse than man of steel, but yeah, especially like 10 years on, especially with the, the James Gunn Superman movie coming up. I think time will not be kind to this film the same way it was for probably not I, one and two. I am not looking forward i i am not looking forward to the discourse a- around this movie when james gunn's superman comes out i, I am not kind either of am <laughs> i kind of i'm kind of here for the chaos for that well, one. i i i <laughs> am fair. and i am not that's valid because uh, on the one hand i'm sure that james gunn's superman will be excellent mm-hmm. but on the other hand I'm sure a lot of people are just going to use this as an opportunity to shit all over Man of Steel. No, and I think this movie is a, it's an important chapter. And, oh, and one thing we haven't discussed, actually. The soundtrack is incredible. Oh, I will say that Hans Zimmer's a theme. Uh, I think it's called What You Are Doing When You're Not Saving the World or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. I adore that theme. 
Yeah. I like the main theme. I don't like most of the soundtrack because it just sounds like droning noise. Like, I, I, I do like the main theme, though, especially when it plays during I mean, that that's fair. Scene. I, mm-hmm. I just really, really like what you're doing when you're not saving the world. Mm-hmm. Is that the is that the one? Is that, like, the main um, motif of the movie? That is the main theme. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then, then I'm going to say, yeah, I like that one, too, especially during that flight scene. I thought it was really good. But, yeah, uh, Man of Steel. More like Man of Steel, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I also do love how the second half of the film just drops all pretense and just becomes like nonstop fighting. Oh, it's great. That's the that's the I best part it. of the movie. <laughs> now, this is not on the list of films that Snyder directed, but he did write and he did produce this film. Uh and it's not on the tier list either. Three hundred Rise of an Empire. Never saw it. Uh, I have not seen 300 Rise of an Empire, actually. Okay, so I'm the only one who's seen it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what are your thoughts on it? it? You know what I think it feels like? Do you ever watch an action like? film from the 80s, and then you find out there's a direct-to-video sequel to it that's the same style, but just feels uh, cheaper? Oh, okay. no. But it's not oh, bad. No. It just what feels lesser. Don't have... This is what happens when you don't give Snyder full control of a 300 movie. And, like, it looks like it. It looks like 300. It feels like 300. It's just lesser. So it's basically die at 300. Yeah, it could still see tier, but it's like... <laughs> That's perfect. So, so it shouldn't be called 300 in that case. It should just be called 150. More like, more like 175. <laughs> 175. <laughs> 175? Oh, one se- yeah, yeah. 175? Okay, so it's a little better than half. Exactly. It's not It's not half. Okay. It's dying. So, I'm guessing you would put it in D tier, then? If we were doing no, this. I don't think D tier. I have something else that needs to go there, and it's not that bad. Anyway, uh, Batman v Superman. Okay. Oh, uh, this here is we totally go. non-controversial here we go. film. All right, That'll be so, before one of either of you before either of you say anything, I am going to drop a hot take here. Oh boy. I like it a little more than Man of Steel. Fair. Okay. I, okay, so here's my take on Batman v Superman. I actually wa- I actually rewatched this movie a few days ago and even did a huge yeah, ass. And to be life fair, uh, to those of you who are watching, we are talking about the ultimate cut, not the theatrical cut. No, the theatrical okay, cut gets an F tier. Um yeah, it, it's a the a- editing mess. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, as far as the ultimate edition is concerned, as far as what Snyder wanted, um, this movie's interesting to me. Yeah, and I don't. That's fair. I because I think on paper there's a lot of interesting ideas at play. I like a lot of the themes. I like the concepts for some characters. But here's where my problem with Batman v Superman lies. None of the themes fucking mean anything by the end. There's this whole interesting idea of like. Does the world need Superman? Should Superman have some oversight? Anything. And that's never answered by the end of this film, because we gotta go have him fight Batman. In no cut. Like, okay, so Not when it comes close. to that, I feel like it was going to come together more if if Snyder had, like, his entire vision with the five movies that he wanted to make. But at the same time, when it comes to this self-contained movie, I get where you're coming from. Right, right. And the problem is we aren't getting those. We we aren't getting the rest of those yeah, films. We're, and we're never going to get those. Yeah, and no, so Snyder never fans going to shut the fuck so, up about them. So unfortunately, I can't talk about this movie and what it could have been with the with the complete vision in mind. I have to talk about what's there. And what's there is an incom- is an incomplete mess of a film. No matter what cut you're watching, it is worse with the theatrical cut. I will say that right now if you are going if you have any curiosity of this movie and want to go watch it, watch the R-rated ultimate cut. You will have a better time. Whether you have a good time is debatable Mm. but um i think well i did and i just have to say that like i i am aware i am fully aware that i am in the minority of people (laughs) that like batman v superman and i don't know i just i just find it to be a decent superhero movie like like nothing overtly wrong about it except for a few scenes which we will undoubtedly touch upon but Nothing about it, like, really pissed me off. Oh, me something really off. pissed me off about this movie. I'll tell you right now. I know, I know. Oh, tell me, like tell I me said, what pissed you I off. I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. Fucking Jesse Eisenberg. 
Oh, I thought he was hilarious. Like, he, I'm gonna be real. He was like me. the levity I needed in this film. He like, hisses me off. Jesse Eisenberg's so much performance. In this movie. Like, okay. I get that, like, this is a different take on Lex Luthor. I feel like Jesse Eisenberg did a good job with this version of Lex Luthor. However, I, un I think it is perfectly valid to not like this version of Lex Luthor because it You're is more like the Joker or the Riddler than it is like Lex Luthor. I, However, I'll agree with Ant that this is a bad performance feel like is overstating it. No, I, I don't think no. it is. <laughs> I don't think no, it is. Not. I don't like this here's, performance. I don't like this interpretation. I don't like what he about does Lex in the movie. Luthor. He just annoys I me so I think the problems are less Eisenberg <laughs> and more the characterization because as far as the character he's supposed to play, how he was written and how he's meant to be portrayed, Eisenberg did fine. The problem is it just doesn't work, but I will say it doesn't work in such a spectacular way. I honestly found every scene with Luther hilarious. Like You see, that's why I, I always think it's going to be whenever I revisit it, but then I revisit it and I'm like, oh, actually, no, I just don't like this. It really annoys. No. For whatever reason, uh, I'm sorry, something about Ant, the way I heavily, he heavily about... disagree with you on this one. And you're allowed to, but something about the way he talks something about the way he moves something about the way he occupies space in a scene whenever i see him show up it makes me like feel this involuntary like and especially because like lex Luthor is one of i think one of the most fascinating villains in comics i think he's such in there's so much yeah depth that's to true and i am i am excited as all hell to see nicholas holt's portrayal of 100%. character same i think nicholas holt was a great choice for luther like i'm very excited to see it but like i said i think eisenberg's luther is so bad like just in just from general characterization and choices that it circles back or back it circles back around it, it does a full circle around the earth and becomes the funniest shit i've ever seen I am weird. I understand that the, that I have particularly weird tastes in what makes me laugh, but this shit makes me laugh. That's fat. Again, that's valid. I am with Jazzy on this one. I liked Luther in that sense. I I can't. I just can't with him. He really so, annoys me so much. And I don't right, like well, how I guess we're going to have to agree to disagree. Then. That's valid. And I don't like how you do Can I talk, like about, can I can I like talk about the few things I like about this movie? Though. Is it Ben Affleck's Batman? Go right ahead. I'll say the performances in general, for the most part, were fine. Um, some, like, a few exceptions notwithstanding. I liked Ben Affleck as Batman, even though I'm not particularly big on this characterization. In fact, I'll say it. I think this is the worst goddamn written Batman I've ever seen in a movie. Agreed. <laughs> um, I disagree. And, and uh, I am <laughs> counting. And I am counting Batman and Robin when I say that Batman same. and Robin. Batman was leagues better than this. But anyway. Uh, okay. So, here's the thing. I don't mind this characterization of Batman because like this is supposed to be a Batman that's you know been fighting crime in Gotham for 20 years this is a guy this is a guy that lost his adopted son and he's become a lot more jaded and he's become more aggressive in his approach and I don't mind that characterization of Batman and obviously he gets better by the end and like his portrayal in Zack Snyder's Justice League is more in line with how you would expect right, Batman and to be portrayed. And, and I'll have my praises I for do that. Understand, mm -hmm. I do understand that starting off this cinematic universe with the goddamn Batman is going to be jarring as hell. And I get that. Mm -hmm. I think that the same I time, Batman I am his firm dick in, in my saying he needed that dick. I like this, this Batman. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't mind having a more jaded Batman. I don't mind having a Batman who's kind of lost his, kind of lost his way a bit and is more brutal and has to learn to not be brutal by the end. But there's two issues I have. There's three <laughs> issues, actually. Okay. One. All right, name him. One. I don't like the fact that he mindlessly kills people in this one. Oh, and not you... only kills people. I don't he think we're supposed to like that, though. He outright tortures them, and I think that's going a bit too far for this character. That's fine, I mean, like, and you, I get you the could film... say that, yeah, but like I don't think we're supposed to like the fact that he's. I doing get that. that. I get that. I get that. I get that we're not supposed to like it. I guess that I get that Batman's supposed to be more antagonistic in this in this version, but I do think there's and some he has lines an arc you... where he gets better. Not but really. Does he but... get better? 
Like he still no, he still like, smashed no. the guy's head against a, a brick like a okay. concrete well, wall. What I mean what I mean by that is like yeah yeah in the warehouse scene he obviously kills people but I mean like <laughs> when it comes to the next movie that we'll be talking about like he's more in line yeah. with how you'd expect okay. Batman to that be still portrayed. Doesn't change the but fact we are talking about this movie, movie now so let's continue. Yeah. So okay so my biggest problem is I think it just crosses a few lines that shouldn't be crossed with this character because then it gets to the point where I wonder. Is he even worth redeeming at this point? There are many points in this movie I feel that way. Like, and keep in mind, I love a good redemption arc. There are plenty of characters with redemption arcs that where some people felt like they shouldn't have been redeemed. I was just about to bring that up. <laughs> like, and the thing is, I just, but I do think the whole branding and letting people live, letting these criminals live in paranoia until they are inevitably killed is a very shitty thing and just beyond the point of redemption for me. That's one problem. Hmm. Second problem. It's never, this is never resolved in the movie. Yes, in Justice League, he is better. He has better characterization, and he's generally closer to what I want from Batman. But within Batman v Superman, within the writing, within this character arc, it is never acknowledged and never resolved. The closest we get is a scene with Luther where he decides, oh, I guess I'm not going to brand the guy. I'm okay now, which I'm sorry is not enough. Like, mm. it is... It's still bad. I mean, I, like, that's fair. Even, that's fair, and I even, guess. And even after the point of redemption where he spares Superman, he's still going out and mindlessly killing dudes. Like, <laughs> there's no, there Agreed. wasn't an arc there. Everything Jazzy just says is correct. But I will add one more thing I don't like and, about this Batman. Um, he loses dick. He needs his dick. He needs dick in his <laughs> life. He fair need, enough. We need and, more <laughs> Dick Grayson in Batman. Dick Grayson is the glue of the DC universe, and they'll confirm it's Jason Todd. In fact, I think Snyder said that Dick got that he lost his that he lost Dick to the Joker. Joker took Dick away, and that's the problem that Dick Grayson's not in yeah, like, this movie. Yeah, okay, you, I'm gonna, you can't take away. Dick. Any, you can't take away. Anyway, Dick. <laughs> third problem. Third problem, and this is one that mainly comes in. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. I'm so it, sorry. And this is. <laughs> and, and and third problem. So the common defense I hear about this Batman is that again, it's a ver he's a very jaded individual who's lost his way. And the point of Batman v Superman is that he's supposed to find his way. That's great. In the years since this movie came out, there's been another Batman movie that did the same shit but way better, and that's the Matt Reeves film. <laughs> I feel like, it's unfair okay. to so compare. This I film will to completely the agree with you on that. I completely but, agree on that. But the point of, yeah, it is a bit unfair, Ant, but the point I'm trying to make is that both films do have a jaded Batman that needs to figure out how, what he's doing is wrong. And that, but the Matt Reeves film just did it better. It was a fully realized character arc. And there's a moment near the end where he has his, Oh shit, I'm the baddie moment. Like Jazzy. Yeah, this is like, that, that was when, Tinker specifically to the Davis when, statue. Yeah, when the Riddler uh, goon gets, gets beaten up and like, yeah, he gets asked like, who are you? And he's like, me, I'm vengeance, which hits so hard. Exactly, and even then, that like, is what makes Batman realize, "Oh shit, am I the baddie?" <laughs> like you said. Also, <laughs> the Batman has Batman with guns far better than Batman, and then Batman v Superman does, where he uses it non-lethally. Okay. Like mm -hmm. everything about my biggest issue, also with Batman in this movie, is that he's not smart. He's not. No, he's really he a dumb. Idiot. He lets himself get like Batman is the world's greatest detective, and he can't figure out he's being played by Lex Luthor, a man who overtly brags about. Well, is it subtle whatsoever about any of his schemes? You want to know the moment where I really hated this Batman? The moment that really aggravated me. But it's the moment after the pointless goddamn nightmare sequence that shouldn't have been in the movie. It's goddamn garbage. Who yeah, thought this was I, a good I will idea? argue with you that it, that it is not pointless when it was being made, but since the DCEU is dead, yes, I guess that does make it pointless, but go on. Okay, so it's the moment where he talks with Alfred, and he it's this line. I can't remember the exact dialogue that leads to it, but Batman says something along the lines of, Superman could be a threat if there's even a 1% chance that he's our enemy. We have to take it as an absolute, which is the stupidest shit 100%. I've ever heard of. Like, world's greatest detective, one of the smartest fucking characters in the DC universe, my ass. Like, you are a fucking moron. And there's so many better reasons why Batman and Superman could have fought. Like, that's the thing, too. And I don't get why it was the last hour of the film. It could have been in the middle of the film. You could have had multiple confrontations. Like, look at Godzilla versus Kong. 
you have like two. I was three... literally just about to bring that up. Yes, right? they do have multiple confrontations in Godzilla versus Kong. You have like two or three encounters, like one where Kong gets beaten, one where Godzilla gets beaten, and one where like Godzilla ultimately wins. Spoiler alert for the movie. And then they team up to, to stop Mechagodzilla. Like this movie could have followed a similar format where you have multiple encounters in the film. You know, because yes, there's the encounter. That's my problem with a lot of this film. Whenever I rewatch it, it's so boring until you get to like the last hour when it's too I, I much action. I disagree, but you're you're entitled to that opinion. So it's valid. And again, so it's I feel like opinion. I have another negative I want to go into, but I want to start by actually going into a few positives because I'm going to tear into this next negative. So I feel like I need to cushion the blow with some genuine praises I have for the film. Yeah, let, let, let's praise. Some, let's find out praises. I have one praise. Ben, that I think we can both agree ben on. Ap- yeah, Ben Affleck is a good Batman. Agreed. Jeremy Irons is a fucking great Alfred. Jeremy Irons is one of my favorite Alfreds in mm. some of the worst I don't deserve films. you, Alfred. No, sir, no, sir. <laughs> you do not. That's my favorite moment in the film right there. The um, whole movie, think... he just wants his grandkids. He just wants gr- Batman to have grandkids. The whole saga of Batman is just mm-hmm. Alfred wanting his adoptive son to stop dressing oh, up God, in his goth outfits. <laughs> um, exactly. While I do think the... While I do think the action scenes are a bit of a mixed bag in this one, there are two that stand out to me. Mm -hmm. One, I actually liked the titular fight up until where it ended. I'll get to that. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I liked the titular... I thought the titular fight was a lot of fun. They actually did... It felt like they knew how to, like, like, where each character should have an advantage and where each like each moment of the fight works and even had some charming moments there's a moment i love where he's punching superman as superman is regaining his strength of kryptonite and as he's punching him each punch does less and less damage to him until it's doing nothing and superman just smirks i love that there's also a moment where batman hits him with a sink and i love that too that is great i do love the part where they get in the bath yeah because at this point this battle was using everything but the kitchen sink (laughs) and so snyder threw in the kitchen sink and my god bless that man um (laughs) okay um the other fight Uh, i love and i think positive Another positive um, the, is that the musical score, at least in my opinion, is another improvement on Man of Steel. Slightly, Particularly yeah. but I still when don't comes, think it's great. I think the one that I mean, like you can have that opinion, but like you can agree that it is an improvement on Man of Steel. Uh, it is. I also think but, that the I think it's also because there's more of different light motifs and different musical themes in there, and I think that the one oh, yeah. theme is the best one in the whole movie by far. It oh is. yeah, and um, even the Batman also, theme like um, was excellent. Yeah, I do love I do love how hammy and over the top Lex's theme is. I think I called it the hammy violins of doom during the my life. The Twitter. hammy violins, yes. I loved, but the other action scene I loved in this movie, and I think it's one most people agree is a highlight. I really liked the warehouse fight. The warehouse fight. Oh very... yes, the warehouse fight scene was so incredibly directed and edited. It is just a masterpiece. I just don't like how but, uh, he kills everyone in the fight. But other than that, it's a cool I don't fight. either. But I think as a fight scene, it's very good. It gave me kind of Arkham game vibes. It was really cool. Mm. I-, I liked it a lot. Um, Agreed. Yeah. I have no doubt the... that Zach played the Arkham games. Right. <laughs> but as for that big negative, I need to bring up now. So um, I got one more positive. Yeah, here Natalie. we go. I go got, ahead I got, and say. Now, wait, wait, Jazzy. Before you do that, I got one more positive to say. Okay. I like okay. Man, I like Superman's plot in this movie. I do too. I think like, Superman I has a was... good. His story is the better half of the film, and it baffles me that the theatrical cut cuts it out. Yeah, that's why. That's another big reason I recommend watching the extended cut because. Mm. Superman's plot was cut out for the theatrical run, which sucks because I actually don't mind the plot in concept. I think it's iffy in execution, but it has some good moments. The whole movie's um, iffy yeah, in execution. His plot but... was another improvement on Man of Steel's plot for him. And I think that now, it's interesting that it the way the, I'll say this one thing, then I'll let you say your thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I think the thing that's interesting about the Superman plot in this movie is that Superman sees Batman as a problem. He acts as a journalist first and foremost, which is interesting. I think. He figures out who Batman is, then goes to talk to him, says, hey, cut it out, and then he leaves. <laughs> like, it's, it feels like, like, like reasonable for what, like, it makes sense. He doesn't have to, act, he doesn't want to actually hurt. He could easily break Batman if he, if he wanted to, but chooses yeah, not and to. Then he's, yeah, like his exact words were like, the next time they shine your light in the sky, don't go to it. <laughs> Bad as and there dead. was a subtle call. There, there was a subtle callback to that right before their big fight, which I liked, where he shines the signal, sits up there for God knows how long, and then when Superman finally comes up to him, he just goes, "Well, 
here I am. <laughs> that was a good moment. Um, but any, but yeah, I do agree. Superman's plot is good. So um, the chat has been mentioning this moment, and I think we'd be remiss if we don't mention it. But um, and wait, 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 wait. For Jazzy, okay. what are you saying? Why did you say that? I'm saying, I'm saying you <laughs> oh, need no, to save no, Martha. No, no, no. <laughs> this is one of those ideas that, in concept, is so brilliant. And an execution yes, is the I do, dumbest I do agree that thing. the idea that, like, he's about to kill this guy, and he's like, you're letting them kill my mom, and, and he's like, w what do you mean by that? Like, and he, and Superman spends what he thinks is his last moment saying, save my mom, please. But and right. how do that. it's done, and, and the, what right. stinks is that I, the idea I, I, you of know what? seeing you know what? is interesting. You know what? I agree. Yeah. I agree. I even, do I don't scene... even mind... I don't even necessarily mind the fact that they're using the fact that they're both named Martha as the way to snap Bruce out of it. That's an interest. That's an interesting use of what is what of a detail that was made completely by coincidence. Like, yeah. no, I have no issue with it either. Conceptually, I, I honestly, did not make the connection that their mothers have the same name until this movie came out. Yeah. Right. The problem is the execution's so bad because first of all, Superman's yelling "Save Martha!" like Batman would know who the fuck that is. Like, yeah, and like. And everything about, and not just that, but also his reaction to it is so hammy, and it's such a, It's so. Goofy. I, I I I I will admit I think Ben Affleck read that line about as well as he could. He put his heart and soul into it, but it makes it even funnier. He like, tried. God bless he put him. His he whole, tried. He put his all bat tussy into it. But it's. It's yeah. so. So like, it's, I will agree mm. that in execution the scene was botched, but I I'm glad you agree that in theory it's an excellent idea. In theory, in it's a great theory, idea, this, but it's just not in, done well. In theory, <laughs> yeah, and and this is where like a lot of people turn their brains off with regards to this movie. Well, the problem right. is uh, it took. The problem is that movie is, it, it, you have all this build up to this one fight that's the thing also like because it takes so long to get to one fight scene your expectations are now through the roof you you are now fully invested you are you and, and, and you know even if you've been bored up until this point even if you can't stand Lex Luthor this is the build up and it ends on this gag like you it overshadows the entire fight that came before it because it's so ridiculous like it takes you out of the movie entirely it violently rips you out of the movie. And it, it's just... Mm. That, to me, uh, is a film breaker. That it's so jarring. And so... Like, you, you, you can't re-engage with the film. You, until something totally different. Until the next fight scene happens. But, like... Right, it's it's just... Okay, but, like, I, I disagree that it's a, a film breaker. But I do agree that it, it was botched in execution. I mm. do agree. So... That. Overall, when it comes to Batman v Superman, I like some of the ideas. I just think the execution was botched, and whether it was due to Snyder's direction or the script written by uh, Terrio and Goyer, it, it could have been Goyer's a fucking okay, horrible so writer. <laughs> Jazzy and I were discussing this the other night, mm -hmm. where like we opined that it is not. It was not entirely Snyder's fault, like that the movie got the reception that it did. But what I do think is that studio in hopes to catch up with Marvel, because Marvel was at their peak at this moment in time when it comes to the box office. Mm. And they were so desperate to catch up to them that I, this, they told this, Snyder, if you, you got you got to do what you got to do, that's fine. But you got to do it. Like super super fast so that we can catch up with Marvel right now. Right, I think Snyder mm. does have plenty of blame on it in this movie, but I do think the studio is also is also is also needs to be dragged through the coals for a lot of the problems is because this film's an overstuffed turkey and nothing mm. and nothing about it really gets to reach its full potential. I'm not going to say nothing about it works because I did point out some bits that did work. I just think it needed like this they needed to do i think this could have been a lot of this could have been fixed if they just did a solo batman film before this like you know what they could have done oh yeah they could have, could have done a few Probably. things one axe the nightmare scenes two yeah axe the the the, the hard drive of superheroes that one woman's mm. trying to chase after don't axe one woman she's fine she can say in the movie she's a cool little thing at the end but like 
acts the acts the, the the teasing for the future. Um, another thing you could have done very easily: switch KG Beast out for a Batman villain who's more noteworthy. No one knows who KG Beast is. Switch him out for like, I don't know. You could you could do um, not Bane's too obviously. It's a Bane previously. You could do Killer Clock. You could do um, you could do like another type of like a Two Face. Anyone it doesn't even matter who it is. Any other Firefly, you know, someone who's a little more noticeable and fun. Make it so that Batman and Superman fight multiple times in the movie for like smaller fights until like maybe the halfway point, and then they work together. And the whole second half of the film is them collaborating rather than it being a fight. It's the actual engagement with the plot. Make Lex Luthor less of a clown. Um, and do anything other than Doomsday at the end, because Doomsday was oh, yeah. so ridiculous. Like, I'm not gonna go into the Doomsday shit. I could, I could go into why that fight scene's a fucking bore and doesn't need and is annoying and I don't like it. Yeah, but yeah. It, it, I think the Metallo point... would been more interesting than Doomsday because Metallo would have been actually compelling. Because if they're working together, if Batman and Superman have to work together, Superman can do any physical stru- fight that Batman can't do. What's Batman going to do against Doomsday? Like, nothing. He, he can't it, do... It's funny anything. how ineffectual he was in that fight. Like, right? Okay. But, like, Metallo... Oh, I don't different. mind... <laughs> I don't mind the final battle, but I do agree with the, this... this With you guys in that... Why did it have to be Doomsday? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, like I, I, I get that it, it was supposed to be, like, you know, an adaptation of... of the death of Superman, but the thing is, Doomsday looking like that when he's just a combination <laughs> of Zod and Luther's blood—that makes no sense. And it's just mm-hmm. like I'll agree on that. And this is the first. This is like you know, say say what you will about the Amazing Spider-Man two. That was the first time audiences outside of the comics saw the death of Gwen Stacy. And while the film has a ton of problems, that scene isn't botched. Like, oh no, I will was... say that yes, that is the best scene in the movie, and I also respect that they kept Peter's hand in it intact. Yeah, like they didn't just change it for the adaptation. No, they made it clear that this a huge part of this was due to Peter. Hundred mm-hmm. percent, and that's effective and that's compelling. They botched the death of Superman in this movie, in my opinion. They did. I think. It, it is done without a hint of gravitas. There is... It, it is done in a way where Superman's death is avoidable. Like, because in Death of Superman, he fights until he can't stand up a second longer and then keeps fighting for humanity. I even brought this up in the uh, in the live tweet. It's like, the whole reason he dies is because he's the one using the Kryptonite Spear to stab mm. Doomsday. Why, can't, why couldn't fucking Wonder Woman do it? You know who should never... Do you know who should have done the Kryptonite Spear? Batman! <laughs> Batman yeah, should have fair. done it. Because, like, Superman, Wonder Woman's restraining him. Superman maybe weakens, maybe sh- throws Doomsday onto the spear. And Batman holds the spear. Something like that. Because otherwise, because Batman, what does he do? He throws a kryptonite grenade at Doomsday to stun him a little bit. But the spear would have pierced his flesh anyway. He's already yeah, restrained. It's... So Batman is completely ineffective in this whole fight. And the, the grenade doesn't stop Doomsday from impaling Superman because he's weakest, because they're both weakened by the kryptonite. So, like, it makes no sense for Superman to hold his greatest weakness willingly when someone else could just as easily do it. Like, it, it's yeah, one of those so... scenes that from start to finish just profoundly an- annoys me, like, on every level. And that's how the film I, ends. I think that's valid. Yeah, and again, I mean, um, comics. I've always, you know, I wrote for a comic book website for like how many years, so I'm a little biased. But like, that whole scene deeply annoyed me um, more than I think anything in Man of Steel. And yeah, look, I can, yeah. I think we could talk for a while on different points of Batman v Superman, where we all agree, where some of us disagree. But I think we need to move on to the next film. So I'm just gonna say. Yeah, we've, we've been talking about it. this one the longest. Yeah, yeah. I, I would it. rank, I would rank Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Ultimate Edition, Final Chapter, Prologue, whatever the fuck. D. <laughs> I'm also saying C. D. You saying C? Okay, so majority wins. So I guess it's D. D tier. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't like this film. Uh, <laughs> it's putting it mildly. Okay. This is 
I know. I'm sorry, Ash, but <laughs> this one really annoys no, me. No, don't don't apologize. I knew I knew it was coming from the moment that we started talking about it. Now, all here's right. The, so, so here's the fun thing. I'm going to do this rapid so fire because the next uh one, two, three, four films that Snack Snyder was attached to, not counting the Justice League release, he served as a producer on. So, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. And one okay. in nineteen eighty. So the thing is, he was listed as an executive producer for all the rest of the DCEU movies mm-hmm. because he had a hand in it. So yeah, he, he got an mm. executive producer credit. But and not I don't want to go just into all of that. every single one of those. I don't want to go that. into all these. So let's just briefly <laughs> talk about our thoughts of the two that come before Justice League, Suicide Squad, and Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, okay. Uh, so Suicide Squad. Like, we all agree, I think all three of us will agree, that it was garbage. Fucking awful. I, I, I will sooner watch Batman v Superman. <laughs> it, it's pretty dumb. Uh, it's pretty bad. But it's but the worst it's thing about it Suicide is... Suicide Squad, on the other hand. But the Excellent only thing movie. I... Oh, the Suicide Squad's fantastic. The only yeah. thing, though, that I hate about Suicide Squad, the first one, is Jared Leto's Joker. That's fair. I profoundly yeah, I, hate that performance. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Mm-hmm. Wonder Woman, though, I think is really good. I think it's pretty, pretty. Uh, Wonder Woman still holds up, like yeah. despite Wonder the fact Woman's that Gal Gadot good. really isn't that good of an actress, no. and also not really that good of a person either. No, no. Nope. Yeah. I still think I'll... Wonder Woman holds up. The yeah. two things that I think hold Wonder Woman back a bit, despite it being a pretty decent movie all around for me, um, is I don't like Gal Gadot's performance, and I think the third act is kind of a mess. But it's not. Yeah, I don't think like, third act the thing is, is that... like, the first two acts set up this this idea that Diana is supposed to find out that like Ares was not responsible for the Great War and that it was humans who are responsible for it, and then they right. just have Ares show up. <laughs> Right, and, and then it's messy and, in a way where I don't hate it. I just like it. No, less. I don't. <laughs> I don't hate it. I think it's a fun action sequence. I think they handled the death of Steve Trevor quite well. Um, I I don't think it's terrible. I don't think the third act is the big dumpster fire a lot of people call it. I just no, don't it, think it's, it's not. Good. But at the same time, like they set up good. this idea and then completely destroyed the idea. So <laughs> yeah, if we were putting it in this ranking, I'd give it a. I'm conflicted between A and B. Like. <laughs> I put it in. Uh, I put it in. I put it comfortably in B tier. Yeah, so, A or yeah, B is fine. Yeah. I think. And yeah. Suicide Squad okay. D. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 Obviously. But now and we also... have. The... Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I was going to briefly touch upon a Justice League before we got to the Snyder Cut. That's fair. Let's let's talk Justice League. Justice yeah, League a little bit before talk about Zack Justice League. Cut. Okay. So the best phrase that can describe Justice League is. Frankenstein's monster. It is a Frankenstein's monster Look, of a movie. It really Here's illustrated my ultimate... that Joss Whedon's not that talented of a creator. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's my ultimate hot take about Justice League, the original theatrical cut. While Joss Whedon is responsible for a lot of problems with that movie, and and I do think he is an awful person who treated his actors horribly... I think that movie was doomed just by how much executive meddling it had from the get-go. You could have gotten anyone to take over for Snyder, which, by the way, my e- even to this day, my condolences to him and his family. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, Snyder's yeah. the circumstances which affected Zack Snyder and his family. That's heartbreaking and tragic. Like, on, there's no, yeah, and and that's what made like the 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 Snyder cut being released so much more emotionally resonant with with me and so many others mm-hmm. because he did it for oh, yeah. his daughter yeah mm-hmm. let's yeah, not, spe- so let's not specify say... specifics though because youtube will demonetize yeah. us even discussing yeah, yeah. that <laughs> like, like i think we all know yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. so but yeah um we so, all know what so, happened yeah. we don't so, need to say the word yeah so yeah with justice league i think the biggest problem is that it was just it was a studio mandated film that felt very artificial in how it was made if i'm being real <laughs> like it felt bad oh yeah <laughs> It wasn't it was good. Very, it did feel very, the, very, it very felt, bad. It felt very. It was studio manufactured. If is the nicest way I could describe it. Like, yeah, it was uh, good in the least. It so, was terrible. So, so when it comes to the Snyder cut, the big Snyder cut that's been hyped up, I was skeptical, but I went in with an open mind. Even knowing, even with the fact that I was indifferent to Man of Steel and I did not like Batman v Superman, I went into the Snyder cut with an open mind. And I'm gonna be honest, I like this one. I like this movie. I, I really, really like the Snyder Cut. 
it's okay. I, again, I don't love it, but I, I haven't. I don't, either. I, I don't really love any of Zack Snyder's DC films. Is the problem? I think he. I think. I think Justice League is his best of the three, in my opinion. Oh, um, un- unquestionably, but but yeah. I don't love it either. I, I think it's a decent film. I, I just, mm. you know, here's my problem with it. If I can, I, I, there's a few. I have a couple issues with it. Um, one of which is just schematics. I don't like how it it could be shorter. Like, there's no reason it should be four hours in length. Um, there are several scenes you can that. trim. You can remove. Um, you can un- you can remove some slow mo. That'd be a lot more efficient in tightening up yeah. some scenes. I feel like the movie could easily have been three hours, maybe three hours and fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah I think I think if you cut out yeah. an hour, you would have had a pretty solid yeah. like film. In fact, I'll say right now, um, you could end this film right before its nightmare sequence, 100%. and you will be satisfied. You'll miss like nothing. the last. The last scene before that sequence was a very great place to end on, like, and I think it would have yes. ended more satisfactory, more in a more satisfying way than than um than when they kept the last two scenes, the nightmare sequence and the bit with. Uh, the thing Mark is, Man like, Hunter. I understand why they made that new nightmare sequence, though, is because Snyder explicitly st- said that he wanted a scene between. DCEU's Batman and Joker. And you know what? That is perfectly valid. But it wasn't a good mm. scene. I get it. <laughs> That's the but problem the... I have yeah, with it. Like, it, it. It's just not a good scene. I don't like that scene. It, it's one of those sequences where you're sitting with the Joker and they, it's... Bat- I mentioned this in the video I just did too. It's just Batman and Joker talking and then like half of the surviving DC universe just standing there in the background letting them have that moment and they don't really do anything that's like there's no tension it's just like there's just like two people chatting and it doesn't there's a sequence uh in the killing in alan moore's the killing joke that is the perfect batman and joker not fighting scene it's just them the two of them they sit they basically after the events of the story they talk and they you know they kind of allude to the fact that sooner or later that their argue their fight is going to end with one of them in the ground ultimately and that there's there's got to be a way to like avoid that in some way to get joker the help he needs and the joker kind of so he says no there's no help in me not even that though he does it in a way where it almost feels like for a second he may genuinely say something that exposes his actual true self to batman and then turns it into a joke that in a way that's so effective and it's a great little scene and uh it's a great sequence but whenever any batman and joker scene occurs where the two of them aren't fighting that's the scene a lot of fans longtime fans will compare it to um and you know the 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 the, 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 inter- the, the interrogation in the dark knight is another great one-on-one dialogue yeah, yeah. oh definitely yeah, it's a great scene this is not that scene this is just no. two characters <laughs> talking in a way where nothing actually deep is said there's no deeper truth being touched upon it's just joker harassing batman and batman being like oh i'm gonna kill you one day but not this day it's coming no you aren't (laughs) and it's like nothing i'm your best friend oh my god yeah joker became kermit the frog there for a second there (laughs) (laughs) so that bit was so that bit was bad but i will say I think this version of Justice League has plenty of good. I think okay. the characters are all pretty interesting. I especially love Cyborg in this cut, which okay, can we just so agree that Cyborg was about, the main appeal? Yeah. When you think about how he was portrayed in, or rather wasn't portrayed in yeah. Justice League. Oh, poor Ray Fisher. Looked, I felt so bad depth, for him. Yeah, how much depth he was given in the Snyder cut. How can you not be pissed off? It's yeah, I was, really as soon as I started, the moment I saw his like big scene where he's like kind of discovering his power and he helps that poor family actually get some money to help them in their hard times, that was the bit where I was like, "Oh, I, I, Ray Fisher, man, I, I totally understand why you wanted this cut release. I get it, man, and I am so sorry you were screwed over as badly as you were." Yeah, because his entire yeah. career and, got like, derailed. It wasn't just that movie; it was like, everything. A great scene. Yeah, he has a great scene in the climax where like he's in the mother boxes and they're trying to trick him and and. 
they like, oh, my, my broken boy, you're all alone. And he's like, I'm not broken, and I'm not alone. I that was love so that scene so that much. So I love good. that scene. Um, but yeah, like I said before, um, in my bitching of Batman and Batman v Superman, I like Batman in this movie. He actually had an arc, and I think it was actually realized, fully realized, and he was actually a good character. Not one of my favorite ba- versions of Batman, to yeah. be fair, but yeah, he I was think atoning he was at least... for being a psychopath. <laughs> right, he was at least serviceable, which is a big improvement over the last film. <laughs> He is. Um, and I will say character. that Wonder Woman was not great in this movie. I feel like she was just Cal a Al, no. to explain the lore to people. Cal yeah. Al, no. D- the DCEU Wonder Woman was never as interesting or as compelling as she is in the in the comics. Not even close. Um, okay. Uh, also, but I feel mini she's tangent. better here than I she have... is in 1984. Yeah. Mini tangent. I'm sorry for interrupting, but mm-hmm. I, I have this friend who is a die-hard fan of Wonder Woman 1984. I mean, really? So, yeah, I'm serious. Like, he will defend it to his freaking grave. I mean, I think it's a little over-hated sometimes, but I don't think I would, like... This no, I don't like, like, go to bat for. Yeah, like, it's not the worst movie in the world, the, but... The, on- the only thing in that movie shit. I go to... The only thing in that movie I'd go to bat for is Pedro Pascal, but I go up to bat for Pedro Pascal in most movies. Yeah, like, he's the best yeah. part of that film by a mile. Uh, and I <laughs> like, think the Cheetah like, is a second this, in terms yeah. of good things. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, like, it ties into what you were saying about how the DCU's Wonder Woman like was kind of shafted. <laughs> she's 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 kind of presented, and it's weird because like later films try to always incorporate Wonder Woman, which I which I get because she's an iconic character, but like. I feel like we never saw her real... Di- I think outside of the original Wonder Woman film, we never saw her true strength when tested. And even in the first Wonder Woman, she's really naive. But we never see her as, like, a true negotiator. We see her as the heart. We see her as the warrior. But we never see her as, like, the lasso of truth, the spirit of truth. You know, someone who identif- amplifies diplomacy someone who is able to you know get to the honest sometimes painful truths of existence because if, uh, if batman's a detective and superman is like kind of the man of steel wonder Woman embodies this deep honesty and earnestness and love of humanity that we just don't see uh but also an in, in intelligence this she's more a violent fighter she's a warrior woman she's a wealth of lore dumping but she's not i mean but then how would you really incorporate that kind of diplomat diplomatic element into what is ultimately a alien invasion story also you really can't mm. but yeah i will say in regards to justice league i in, in regards to Zack Snyder's justice league i did like most of the characters i liked cyborg a lot mm. um i liked batman fucking love aquaman Jason always Momoa's aquaman. aquaman is is always yeah. a highlight and surprisingly i liked flash in this movie I think like, I would have liked, you know, it being Ezra Miller. I would have yeah, liked Flash really liked if it wasn't Miller. Ezra Miller. Yeah, Ezra like, Miller annoys. He, they're, they're a rough you one. That, yeah, Ezra Miller, despite the fact that they are a psychopath, they have they're, cre- they're nuts. <laughs> they are at the center of what is possibly one of the coolest scenes in any superhero movie ever. You which mean is the of course, Academy Award-winning <laughs> sequence? Yes, um, like it, it, but, it did um, get a feature at the Oscars for but, um, like the like, I do, cheer moment I also, or whatever it was. Something that enters the mm-hmm. speed force. But yeah, um, as yeah. far as the other positives of this movie, I liked the action scenes a lot. Um, there were some very cool, striking visual moments, as there are in a lot of Snyder films. Uh, mm-hmm. I I thought Steppenwolf was a huge improvement over the theatrical cut. Like, God. No, mm-hmm. Almost Not anything would have like not a great villain by any means, but good not... is better than nothing. Like, <laughs> uh, I would say, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I kind of like that Steppenwolf is kind of like just this abandoned warrior that just wants to come home, and then Desad is like, "Well, you still owe the Great One fifty thousand more worlds, with endless options for renewal." 
So wait, so basically he's in, then, he's in student options for renewal. Wait, so basically he's in student debt world. Is that right? He has a student, yeah. He has a, he has a student debt, loan yes. and he has to he's pay it off. Very relatable villain. Very relatable villain. Um, the most human like, villain Snyder ever has ever made. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, I. But yeah, it's it is a bit too long. I think a lot of the last hour could have been cut. Like everything regarding the nightmare and. Mar- everything in regarding Ma- Marsh Manhunter, especially since he kind of ruins a, what was actually a genuinely yeah, good scene between Lois, scene. And, uh, Lois and Martha in the middle of the movie. There was like this genuinely great scene between these two that this guy just fucking ruins by his presence. So. Yeah, I don't get. Also, yeah, can no. I just say that this is the first live action DC movie to have Darkseid in it. And he is such an imposing presence in this movie. I kind of wanted more of him. Like I, 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 I liked, did want more of him. I did he, want he, more of him he looked, so much. He liked, he looked cool. Um, and I liked um Ray Porter's performance quite a bit. Like this was. Yeah, and I do like that. Like the last scene on Apocalypse was like his minion telling him, "I told you Steppenwolf would fail," and then he's like, "Yeah, yeah, you did." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess yeah. you did. And yeah, I do think there was kind of this air of hope in this movie that I think was kind of missing from the last two DC films. Like, there's this film kind of does have this hopeful feel by the end that I I really dug. Like, Mm. I again, I don't think it's one of the best superhero films ever made by any means, by any stretch of the word. But I do think it is a solid superhero film that I did enjoy, and I have gone back to rewatch, albeit in pieces because this film is fucking long. And thankfully, it is divided into chapters. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate it. (laughs) So here's the thing. Yeah, he he knew that it's gonna be like a long one for people to get through so he mm. he just did that for our sakes so here's the thing though so here's the, here's, the, here's the thing I hear what you're saying I respect all that you just said I just don't find it particularly interesting <laughs> you know what I mean that's fine like, that's it, fine. It's, it's, I, it's not for everyone I get it, like, I, get it. it I enjoy it, it. It's I like, enjoyed it it's like all these elements on paper like sound interesting but like when you watch it it's compelling. It's better than the just... I wonder if people would like this film as much if the first version of Justice League didn't come out first. If this is the only well, version honestly, we got. I don't really... I, I, I can't really answer that question, to be honest. Right. Yeah, it's impossible it's, to it's say. The, yeah, it's like I want to create a hypothetical scenario where this film came out and this was the version of Justice League we got, but I, I can't. It's so tied to the fact that it didn't happen initially (laughs) exactly and a lot of the i think and it was raised from the dead exactly and a lot of the respect i have for this film comes from that right it comes from that context that this was the version that was never meant that was never going to be because of tragedies outside of control but Mm -hmm. when you look at the plot they chose to tell with this story it all builds up to the justice league being ineffectual against steppenwolf's forces they can't win without Superman. And then Superman kind of carries the team to the finish line until oh, like the final. No, 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 no. That, I, that, that, with all due respect, that is inaccurate. That is more applying to Justice League. Oh, but that's Justice more so League, there, I'd in, say. Yeah. Yeah. But in Zack Snyder's Justice League, as, as you remember, he does show up, but it's not an automatic win. And I like that they do that. Like it's not an right. automatic I feel, win. It's I feel shows like up. they all contributed to that to that last fight. Like everyone yeah. had their moment. And if you'll died. recall, if you'll recall, they all fucking died for a second. That is true. The Flash does enter the Speed Force after all. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think the like Flash saves their asses. That's also true. And I do like how Wonder Woman delivers the final strike. But I feel like, you know, it it, it has that feel where like, with with it it, it the way. It feels to a, to a degree, at a certain point, is that Superman kind of is that linchpin they need in order to get that far. Whereas I wish that I can't even find a word to articulate it. It's more that Superman feels like a device in the narrative. Like he feels like he is a tool rather than a character with an arc with a narrative. That's a valid that interpretation, the, given that he reality. shows up like three hours in yeah yeah like it feels, uh, yeah I, I think what i was trying to get at more was that it, he doesn't feel like he matters beyond what purpose he can serve in the final act 
Mm -hmm. Whereas, and that's why I will say one thing I think the Justice League cut did, actually did okay with was Superman having a bit more of a personality. So. Mm. At and the like, same that time, is the, that is the one the point I will of... concede to it. Yeah. That is the one point. Yeah. Like, however, it came counter argument: cost. you can actually look at Superman's face in this movie without feeling really uncomfortable. That is true as well. Oh, so yeah. you know, <laughs> I cannot believe we change. went this long. <laughs> I cannot believe we went this long without mentioning the CGI upper lip. <laughs> that was pretty bad. That was really bad. That was like some of the worst modifying. But the problem I think is ultimately is that the film is not the sum of its parts. I feel like the parts I, I are really agree, compelling. But I, I get where you're coming from. And like, there's so many characters who show up in this movie who are so interesting, but like, only get like a second or two to, to shine. Like, you have J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon. You have Volko show up, you know, who's a great, fun character from Aquaman played by Willem Dafoe. Yeah, but to be fair, like, Volko showing up was, like, supposed to set up, you know, the Aquaman movie, and it did. Mm -hmm. Which I will say, it does better set up. It does, like, going from Ju Z Snyder's Justice League to Aquaman is a bit smoother of a transition because there you actually do have that scene. Yeah, because in Justice, in Justice League, League uh, yeah, in Justice League, Volko did not show up. Mm -hmm. No, didn't show at all. And you forget that in hindsight because you think, oh, well, he's obviously mm -hmm. there. You know, he shows up, but like, no, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, and then in when the Aquaman solo film show um comes up, Willem Dafoe is just kind of there. Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, he's vocal. Oh, yeah, vocal, yeah, yeah, vocal, right? <laughs> you know, he was always here. But like, it just it just feels funny to me because like, there's so many ideas on paper that seem interesting, but there's something about the way they're done in this film where I feel like they're so mythic they forget the humanity of these characters i feel like at certain points i mean i disagree but back to mm. you know um what you were talking about with uh jk simmons yeah like he was there to uh, like not only him but deathstroke uh, towards the end was there to set up the the solo batman movie that they were planning to do mm. but that unfortunately got scrapped it's actually funny when i interviewed um Joe Manganiello, back when I was working with CBR, he was he tried. Wait, you did that? Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I interviewed him. Yeah, he, he's a oh, that's awesome. He's a tall dude, by the way. He was really friendly, but he's tall as anything. Like he mentioned, like nice. I asked that's him, awesome. I tried to ask him about the Justice League movie because it was before. This was like in 2019. It was before they even announced the Snyder Cut, and he was like, "Oh man, I wish." <laughs> it's like I, I'd write a book about what what's going on behind the scenes there. I'm like, "Yeah, I bet you would." Oh, uh, he was cool though. I liked him. But no, uh, yeah. Well, I you wish should have, he, you he should have said, "I don't want to fight you, Deathstroke. I wouldn't want to fight me neither." I wish. <laughs> but uh, no, I, yeah. I wish he was Deathstroke in something else. He's he seems like he really okay. enjoyed that, like the everything for that. Yeah, like when they do that scene in the Snyder Cut of when Deathstroke goes to meet Lex Luthor, the way like the the idea that Lex Luthor is the one that gives Bat uh, Deathstroke Batman's secret identity. That is such a good setup for a Batman solo movie, and it just never happened. I get, mm. but then again, we also got the Batman out of it, so. Yes, we did yeah. get the Batman, and I am yeah. eternally grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, so I think it evens out at the end. So, but uh, yeah, overall, in terms of Zack Snyder's Justice League, it's flawed. It has issues. I think it could have done with some cuts, but uh, like, and not, uh, but I know the word "cut" in that movie is kind of like heresy to some fans. So I'll I'll stop there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, I would put it in A tier. I would put it in B. I'm saying B as well. Let's do B. So okay, B it is then. So we have two. Okay. Left. Uh, Okay, and so I mean, let, let, of these this movies. stream should be ending soon because uh, only Ant and I have seen Army of the Dead, and only Ant has seen Rebel Moon. That's true. Yeah, I have no gonna... I have nothing to contribute to the next two aside from the reason why hmm. I haven't seen Rebel Moon yet. But we'll get to that when we get to Rebel Moon. So. I'm gonna read a couple comments okay, so... before we get started with that, though, just to see if anyone here people make for my Dick Grayson thing. Uh... <laughs> oh, hey, Dragon Ball Super Dope. Hey, how's it going? If you're still in the stream, I saw you comment. Oh, he's cool. Uh, Zack Snyder hater. I enjoyed Snack. So a lot of people who don't like Sna Snyder still like the Snyder cut. So that sets. So it looks like we were on, on something with that one. Decent action film. And again, I don't dislike the Snyder cut. I just think it's not as strong as it could have been. I think we got some that's people. Fair. We got that's, some people dying. Yeah, again, that's fair. We got some people dying on the hill of Wonder Woman eighty four. The Criterion Collection Zack Snyder. The Criterion Zack Snyder collection when. <laughs> Okay. Working on it. Working, <laughs> Working on, on it. collecting all of them for my pristine Snyder collection. Some people are saying for that Desaad is the worst HR any company could ever have. 
<laughs> oh yes. Like I do I do appreciate the vibe of like whenever Steppenwolf called up Desad, Desad is just like, "Ugh, I got to deal with this asshole again." <laughs> I also love that people are saying um that Sonic the Hedgehog and Justice League kind of exist in the same spectrum of films that were brought yeah. on the brink by fan, fan demand. I love that. They also have the same like, composer, in, ironically. Okay. And the same composer. Uh, this is a conversation for another time, but I gotta say, like, on one hand, it's cool that they redesigned Sonic after the abomination that was in that first trailer, but on the other hand, those animators were probably severely crunched. That's true, but controversial opinion I think the Sonic yeah. movie is better than Zack Snyder's Justice League you're you're correct you know what <laughs> like I can see someone saying that like <laughs> I really enjoy the Sonic movies <laughs> yeah, yeah for what yeah, they no. are obviously I'm not saying like look, you know look, look I've gone better, back to but... rewatch Sonic 2 more than I have fucking Zack Snyder's Justice League and yeah, I love it every time because you can time. watch but... it realistically in an afternoon <laughs> That's but the at the problem. same time, Sonic 2 is kind of too long. <laughs> nah, nah, I think perfect it's, length. I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect. Wedding that's scene my, included. Uh, that's my, that, that, scene, that movie is my Snyder Cut. I love every minute of Sonic 2. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Wedding scene included. And I'm looking for Sonic yes. 3, where we get Keanu as Shadow the Hedgehog so and a super that. fat Robotnik. Yeah. I just want to anyway. see Amy Rose in one of these movies. I'm just saying. Same. Anyway, Same. Amy's my favorites. <laughs> Army of the Dead. Okay, so Army of the Dead, the movie where it teaches you that please do not give blowjobs in the car, otherwise a zombie apocalypse will break out. Yeah. Okay. Basically. I need to see. I need to see this fucking movie now. You just convinced me. In yes. One there's also a zombie this. tiger. <laughs> yes, there Holy is a zombie shit. tiger. I need to go watch this. <laughs> the movie. Okay, it, it's Jazzy, a heist. It's when a the zombie heist is over, movie. you might want to go watch this. I would honestly, though, I'm going to be real. I'm kind of going to rewatch Sucker Punch after the stream because talking about it made me realize, like, shit, I want to watch okay. it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. But yes, Army of the Dead. Zack Snyder going right back to his zombie roots. There's things about this movie I really like, and there's things about it I really don't like. I think the thing I don't like the most is the length. I think it, it could have been shorter. Uh, two it, it, hours you know what? I, I completely long. agree that it could have been shorter. But at the same time, like, the opening scene, like with with like I said, the the blowjob and the zombie apocalypse thing, ends like <laughs> a wall being down. Like, that, it opens cool. with the Richard Cheese cover of Viva Las Vegas, which was freaking legendary. Yeah, the opening's great. Again, it's like it's like Day Dawn of the Dead. I almost said Day of the Dead there. Dawn of the Dead. The opening's great. Opening is a solid opening. I dig the opening of uh, Army of the Dead. Um, I just don't think. I think the heist element's really cool. I think the zombies are yeah, all really that, cool. That is such a cool concept. Zombies are enclosed in Las Vegas. This crew needs to get a score in Las Vegas, and they have to go through a zombie-infested town to get it. That is such a cool concept. And I like how there's no pretension of meaning here. It's just a heist film, and there's grotesque zombies. There's not like there's a super... Because a lot of the with with his with his DC trilogy, Snyder tried to really push these the mat themes and bigger ideas, and I think the themes got away from him a little bit. Um, I think that this film really goes right down to the core of the plot. Just just focus on this cool set, yeah. these cool set no pieces. No bullshit, just goes right into it. Yeah, and there's some cool heist sequences on top of the zombie sequences. My problem ultimately is length. Like, I this just think movie could be shorter. Is so aesthetically cool mm -hmm. like it is it is so unique yeah in in its place in the zombie zombie subgenre agreed uh i think the one thing is length and that's about it i think any problem i have with the film can be solved with it just being even an yeah. two hours long also, just 40 minutes yeah. cut you can also cut can i just say that snyder when he found out that Chris, like yeah. whatever his last name is, Yelia, like mm -hmm. I think was his last name. Yeah, who was Yelia, when the player. allegations came out against him, like completely removed him from the movie, replaced him with another actor. Who's like better, no problem. The he was a great, and people couldn't even tell. That's how well done it was. It was, it was like so exactly. Seamless. People like couldn't even figure out he was replaced unless they like 
you know, they, 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 they went frame by frame or whatever and found like certain ano anomalies with the shots. You know, that's about it. But it, th that was fantastic. Um, I have nothing that bad to say about this film. I just have things that I think hold it back to be. And Batista's in the film. Batista is in the film. That, that right there is great. Odie Wynn. But I think it's the only thing that... I think I kind of want to watch this movie again after we're, after we're over here. Yeah, the more I'm describing Army of the Dead, the more... I was, at first I was going to say like a B or C, but I'm, I'm leaning towards... No, I'm still going to say B tier. I am torn between... I am torn between A and B. I think B only because... I think we're both torn. I think what, I, I'm, uh, what's holding me back from saying A is that the film just isn't as great as it could be it's just a really good it aims to be good and it is good i think is the best way of putting it like it aims you know to what? be it does it good it does its job yeah it, it does its job and we need good films we don't need we don't always need a great film this aims to be a really good film and it is a good film it doesn't aim to be the greatest thing ever like justice league and batman v superman and because of that it's when it doesn't hit the mark it's not as disappointing it's just like okay, that's that's less great than I was hoping it would be. But so it's, it's more you know, Snyder just yeah. having fun, like he did with um fucking Sucker Punch. So. 100%. Except I'd say it's yeah. a little more grounded. So I'd than say Punch. yeah. I think I'm gonna sit with B tier. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, was putting okay. B tier. So for this last movie, you are the only one who can comment on it. So I'm gonna and explain why I haven't. I'm gonna explain yeah. why yeah. I haven't seen Rebel Moon yet, and yeah. I think and Ash will is, have the same reason. The same reason I'm doing it. So yes, go ahead, Josie. Oh. I am not. I have not seen Rebel Moon simply because I hear Snyder's doing the fucking Snyder cut shit again of his own choice. I found out, which God damn it, Zach. Yep, hundred percent. Um, and I feel like. I feel like with that, like he found a model of success, and he's just like, you know he's what? He's melting I'm just it gonna... for all it's worth. And in some, and in some regard, I think that's stupid. But in some regard, I mean, if you found if you found a thing that gets you money, I don't, I can't blame you. But yeah, so, so I have not watched Rebel so Moon. So Jazzy I'm and just I, going, because I'm, of that, we have I'm just waiting not for the extended watch. cut. Fair enough. Well, considering yeah. the version that exists right now, here is my ranking of Rebel Moon. At the bottom. Right there. Okay. Because I'm this movie sorry. is just horribly written. It is bad on every conceivable level. But it's so bad it's compelling. I want to see part two because I'm just so invested in how bad this is. This is... All right. So I, I apologize that you can't go into more detail. Oh, I but... can't. Oh, I will if you let me. But I'm not going to in too much detail. Well, I mean, you should I, I kind of want to watch the director's cut for myself. So if you would withhold from giving too much detail, that would be appreciated. That's valid. Here's, uh, if here's you the big question. Oh, yeah. Uh, here's the big question I have. Mm -hmm. And you could probably save it for later if you think it'd be more fitting. But do you think the quality of this film could improve with an extended cut or do you think it would just lead to more bad because that's kind of the big debate i'm hearing i don't see how an extended cut could fix it what's wrong with this film fair uh because well, we we will see won't we yeah the problem i have with this film is an exaggeration of the problems i have with his justice league films you introduce characters they have their moment they do their cool bit while all the other characters stand by and watch and then when that bit's done said character joins the background cast and the next character has their one bit and everyone stands around and watches and then when that scene ends they go back and the cycle repeats itself there are so many instances in this film where characters do a single thing and then are never useful ever again jeez i see yeah that is what yeah me about uh it. this sounds like a complete mess yeah <laughs> and i'm this it, it, this is a film that either was recut to hell and back, or and I'm not just talking. They don't have a scene afterwards. Some of them barely talk after their scene. They just stand there uh. in silence for the majority of the movie while things happen around them, and they don't even have like a cool action beat. They just kind of stand there while other characters talk about them. It's basically Seven Samurai meets Star Wars meets a Dungeons and Dragons campaign meets Warhammer meets 
John Carter of Mars, and like with a weird tentacle scene as well. That was odd. I don't know why they included the tentacle sex scene. That was a little weird, but I digress. Uh, so <clears throat> it's here's the thing. I don't know if I'm gonna like this film by the time I get to the extended cut. Maybe, maybe it might be better. Maybe part two will end up being decent. Who knows? I'm kind of fascinated either way because I gotta give it to him. Disney did not want to make this into a Star Wars film, and he said, fuck you, I'll make my own Star Wars with Blackjack and Hookers. <laughs> I'll be honest, I get why Disney didn't want to make this. <laughs> I can, I totally understand why Disney told him no. I get, uh, yeah, there's probably a legitimate reason, but I'm just saying, I gotta respect the, I gotta respect the dedication to making it, where he just pretty much goes, I'll do my own Star Wars with Blackjack and Hooker. I respect that too, I just don't think the movie was any good. Fair, fair, like, fair. You know what, I, that, again, that I, I still need to see it, but, I'm, yeah. I'm worried about, like, but I am fascinated, who knows, maybe... Because maybe I'll be in the same mindset as you, Ant, saying, "Oh, this is so bad," but I gotta see how it fuck how this train wreck ends. Listen, like... the, the part two comes out this Friday, and I am and I and I think it's very apt that the next day is four twenty. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about how I intend on watching this movie. That's fair. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So this it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny how we've had our ups and downs, and unfortunately, we have to end with a big down. So, well, it could be worse. Okay, part two could come out part... after the tier list, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, it, we could introduce the F tier. <laughs> but well, that's uh, why Justice League's still sitting. Justice League's still sitting. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But uh, that is it. That is all the Snyder directed movies. That's everything. I'm so I'm surprised the rank that had the most was A, if I'm being real. Like, uh... Same. Yeah, like, for such a polarizing filmmaker, like, we surprisingly agreed on a lot of, like, points and came to the conclusion that, hey, this movie is good. This movie yeah. is pretty great. Except for Sucker yeah, Punch. Uh... You guys won that one. <laughs> Yeah, look, Sucker yeah. Punch was kind of the weird outlier, Majority, and you know ooh. what? I, I'm as some as a dedicated Sucker Punch fan, I'm happy with it being an outlier. I would have it no other way. Like, and I do think that it's, it's not surprising to me that his DC trilogy, which is the most high profile project he's worked on, uh, is the most widely spread across this entire thing. I, right. I think it's no shock to me that BVS is where it is. I think. When people think Zack Snyder, think of Batman v Superman, uh, for better or worse. More so than 300, more so than Watchmen, uh, more so even than the Justice League movie, I think. Because it's just so emblematic of his weaknesses as, as a director. Right. So here's the conclusion I came up with when I noticed what my two... Fa so my two favorite Snyder films, obviously, are Sucker Punch and Legend of the Guardians. And I'm kind of realizing... There's two things I notice. One, when he's just kind of doing his own thing, he makes some fun shit. Two, he needs to work in more animated films. I think mm -hmm. that's his calling. Like he's like he clearly loves like he clearly has a love of this specific kind of art design that I think is well suited to animation and Le and Legend of the Guardians really displayed that. I'd like to see him try another go at at, at an animated movie. I think it could mm -hmm. lead to something at the very least interesting to watch. So Agreed. And three, and I think you both will agree with me on this one. Like his directorial style is gorgeous. What he needs is a gr consistently great writer to pair along with that style. Agreed. I think the strongest part of Watchmen is David Hayter's script. You get solid snake on your movie, you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, David Hayter's a good screenwriter. Work with him more, Zach. He's clear he's clearly good at his job, like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, speaking of David Hayter, you ever watch the 90s anime that David Hayter was, was a voice actor in? I have not. So, have not. if you ever watch the dub of Fushigi Yugi, he plays the male love interest. And, uh, <laughs> this is the most Bishonen, like, Bishonen love interest in anything ever. 
This is like the prettiest boy, pretty boy and, in any. And let me voice guess, three. he does his fucking solid snake voice. He he does like it's a it, the best way of describing it is if you combine early solid snake with Brock from Pokemon, that is the voice. That's beautiful. Oh, that sounds uh, awesome. <laughs> it's great. Uh, it, it's fantastic. And there's some parts where it's totally snake. <laughs> it's just the gravelly right. snake voice. But like All right. other times, it's like you know love interest higher pitched rock snake voice. So, I think one last thing we could end this on is each of us to say which is our favorite of his films and which one is our least favorite and why for both. Who wants to start? We all know it's the. the I will start. Right, go for it. As um um if if you don't mind. Go for it. Oh, yeah, please. Go ahead. Okay, so my favorite of the bunch is Watchmen, and but uh, I I think that if I were to actually read the graphic novel, it might end up being Sucker Punch instead. But we will see. Um, least favorite? Um, that's actually a good question. Ooh, here we go. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go with Man of Steel on that front. Hmm. Probably because I was the most bored watching that one. Valid, valid point. <laughs> okay, so who wants to go next? Jazzy? Um, my favorite is Sucker Punch, as I think the best way I can describe Sucker Punch from, from my perspective, it's very gender. Not going to lie. Like, it's very oh, gender. Yes. <laughs> and it is I a very close second for me. Like, it is... It is a movie that just has an entire vibe that I absolutely dig, and I love watching, and I love going back and watching it, and I unapologetically adore this movie, warts and all. Close mm -hmm. second is Legend of the Guardians, um, and my least favorite would probably be Batman v Superman, though. Yeah, it's though I could I could easily swap it out for Man of Steel depending on my mood, just because at the very least Batman v Superman felt like a Snyder movie, warts and all, while Man of Steel felt like a Nolan film that Snyder was attached to. But Batman v Superman definitely has more issues with it. Okay, that's interesting. I thought we were going to have the same state statement, but I guess not. Uh, I'm going with Legends of the Guardians as my favorite. I think it's the most interesting. I oh, love the, I you love have the a fantasy. different uh, favorite one. Uh, yeah, it, 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 that's, the division, that's the divisive aspect. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that he is really able to bring this fancy world to life, even if it, it's not a close ad adaptation of the books. I do feel like it's this really imaginative, really incredible vision that we don't see too often. My second favorite is going to be though Dawn of the Dead. I think he real. I think Ooh, yes. Snyder is best when he's doing these zombie movies. I think his zombie films ha just hit the right note for me. He they don't have the pretension he's trying to hit with his more grandiose epics and he doesn't have to try as hard to tell these bigger themes and because of that he's able to focus on the, the the set pieces he's able to focus on the tension of an individual sequence and there's scenes in dawn of the dead that 20 years on stick with me and that's not easy for a, a horror film because i see so many horror films i see so many zombie films it's hard for a zombie mm. film to do something that I haven't seen already. And the baby birthing scene is that, you know, the zombie baby scene is probably the one that sticks out the most to me. Um, Watchmen would be the next closest, I'd say, despite my hangups with it. Bottom is Rebel Moon. Uh, Rebel Moon is worse than Batman yeah. v Superman. Because at least with Batman v Superman, there are things I can say I liked about it. I can say, oh, well, Alfred was good. Well, the, the warehouse scene was good. There is nothing I can say like about the Rebel Moon that compares to that. This film is a mess. It is a train wreck of a, of a, of a cinematic experience. And I have no hope that a director's cut can salvage this uh, catastrophe of a cinematic experience. It is the only film here that I will say unambiguously, I felt like I was losing my mind while watching on a true profound level. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised you didn't add an F tier physically so you could put Rebel Moon there. Justice, jo Justice League is them is represents the worst of all cinema though. It represents the Fair. corporate yeah. cash grab and the the cynical I don't understand why Wonder Woman's characters make any sense to me. I'm going to add a scene where the Flash falls over and grabs her boobies. Oh god. Oh, yeah, that, that yeah. It represents like the worst of cinema to me. Like the corporate stooge does, lowest common denominator nonsense uh that i just hate but, you know i think this whole entire stream was 
nothing less than a celebration of this man. In many ways, yes. Even when we were criticizing him, I I will mm-hmm. say this: yeah. uh, I would rather a film like Rebel Moon exist than a hundred corporate like plugins to fill out a quota of like nonsense. Like, yeah. say what you will about Rebel Moon; it's still better than. The, a placeholder film in, a, in an established franchise. Uh, I'm not right. going to specify it's... which franchise I'm referring to. Um, but I will say I did just rewatch some of the Transformers movies, and I hate them more than I did before. Uh, <laughs> which ones? <laughs> the honestly, the Michael Bay ones. If I'm being honest with you. Oh, uh, yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. I you kind of cut out when you said what the, the movie. The was, Michael was Bay like, Transformers. I, I really oh, can't God, stand I those movies. Stuff. Don't fucking remind me. I got to remind myself when we're doing our when we continue our Razzie marathon. God damn it. Yeah, like say what you yep. about Star we, Wars we or Marvel. Watch the they, they don't compare to the to the bottom of the barrel that is Transformers. I think it, this is all to say that whether you like his films or not, at the very least everything Snyder makes, it seems like he wants to make it. And in that regard, I appreciate yeah. that he's doing that he's clearly doing something he loves even if I may not always enjoy it. And hey, when I do enjoy it, I get a gem, so I'm not going to complain if the man wants to make more movies. I just prefer he makes good ones, but I think that's a reasonable request for any well, filmmaker. Yeah. Well, I think it's perfectly yeah. fine for a filmmaker to make films for themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he's a David Lynch. <laughs> I wish he would no. do his David Lynch That's weird fine. film, though. That's fine. He doesn't have to be. Anyway, and I will. Con- but even if he continue, even if not the, every, even if everything he makes going forward is completely bad, at least I'll have the batshit insane world of anime schoolgirl psychology in World War II yes. and fantasy in Japan and everything and CGI owls. I am happy with those. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right, we've been streaming right, for so almost. Any three... final oh. comments? Oh yeah, um, I, my comments is I think that Snyder. He, I, I I said this in the film, the video I film, the video I put out uh, last week. Uh, I do not like most of Snyder's films, but I am always going to watch them because I think what he does is uh, is valuable. It is art. It is art. I don't enjoy necessarily all the time. But I appreciate that he did what he wanted to do in his own way. And, and you know, I'm glad that mm-hmm. we were able to provide our more positive perspective for you. Exactly. I'd, yeah. say, I was, I'd yeah. say I was more mixed, honestly, because I had films that I liked more that I like that I liked more than Ant did, while there's films where I was right there with yeah. him. So. Sucker Punch yeah. being one of them. So I right don't now, I don't get that. I don't get the love of Sucker Punch. I, I that doesn't to me, I've just never connected with oh. that film. I just can't. Agree to disagree, my friend. <laughs> valid, valid. But again, I, I find it interesting. I, I don't have to love it. I just don't find it particularly compelling, personally. But that's fine. That's that's film. Not every not every film is going to connect with every audience member, and that's cool. Uh, okay. All right. Well, thank so, you for having me on. I nope. really appreciate that. No problem. Where can people find you two? Okay, well, you can find me on... Twitter, I refuse to call it X. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at Ashy Groovy. And you can find me on Letterboxd at Ashy Slashy22. That's adorable, that Letterbox name. Uh, <laughs> yes. Where can people find Thank you, you Jazzy? <laughs> you can find me under Lady Jazzington on Twitter. Um, I also started recently using TikTok to upload random shorts and the like, and you can find me under Jazzy Oliver Vo there. Um, I mostly just upload random things as well as fun voice acting, uh, some some fun voice acting oddities. And you can also find me here on YouTube under Jazzy Oliver. I am current. I've been doing a bunch of streams, mainly mainly a watch stream of Inanimate Insanity, the series I voice in, as well as a video game stream of Persona 3 Reload, which I really need to get back to, honestly. <laughs> but yes. Mm. Um, should you get back to Persona, or should you watch Sucker Punch again? Decisions, decisions. Honestly, I'm too tired to do another fucking stream. Ash, I'm going to watch Sucker Punch. <laughs> Valid. Yes. Valid. Yes. Well, actually, first, I'm going to finish the game I started of Mario Party 7, and then I'm going to watch Sucker Punch. Oh, Valid. Oh, Valid. yes, of Valid course. Choice. Continue to yell into your microphone there. Right, right. Yeah. So while I'm getting Sucker Punch, after I get Sucker Punch by the fucking computer players, I can watch Sucker Punch. Exactly. Hey. Well, All right, and Ant, where can we find you? You're here already. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> 
Okay. Exactly. That's the joke. <laughs> All right, then. That is the joke. All right. Let's wrap it up for today. I think it's been we've been streaming long enough. Um, goodbye, everyone. Farewell. Bye. Bye.